War Eagle football is. I got my fans in the stands, my team on my back. My Hard work. I put my city on the map. Dedication. But I know I can do better. Endurance. College offer after all this hard work. Keyword. Telling you a lie. Loyalty. So how do I stay focused? Persevere. Life and do I have a fair chance when the world so shite? See, we all cooperate. I got some things on my mind, but I need to regain my self-discipline. It's game time. Give all, leave nothing. Responsibility. I gotta choose. Clear eyes. Leadership. I can't lose. Fight. Belief. Training. Trust. Loyalty. Victory. Welcome to Wayne County High School War Eagle football and the first State Bank pregame show. I'm Marshall Wood along with Paul Keene of the Wayne County News and from Parts Unknown, the DFO of Wayne County High School War Eagle football, Kenny Odom. We'll be bringing you all the action from the inside and the outside tonight as Wayne County takes on the Tigers of Hattiesburg High School. Paul, what you got for us? What, what's it looking like coming in here tonight? Well, Hattiesburg going to uh, under new head coach Tony Vance, who had some success, had quite a bit of success up at Charleston. Um, the Tigers have looked like they are still adjusting to his system, but a very, very dangerous team, lots of athletes. They're going to put it together some Friday night, and we're just hoping it's not this Friday night because a lot of athleticism, very physical, and can do a lot of damage. Also had a week off, so they've had two weeks to prepare for Wayne County. Ought to be an interesting game tonight. Well, you know, you, you, you mentioned that new staff. We had a new staff last year, and we started out 0-2 and, and then reeled off 10 in a row. So, you know, let's just hope that's not their night tonight. Kenny, what do you see coming into tonight's action? Well, it, it's going it's to have a lot to do with the battle up front, uh, uh, and most ball games do. I, I guess that's sort of a cliche, but it, it, it's true. It doesn't matter. Uh, their defensive front uh, plays hard. The linebackers, you don't see a lot of blitz. Oh, I say you don't. We have not seen a lot of blitzing from them <laughs> before tonight. The two weeks could have took care of that. But uh, they like to let their, their front four guys play the line of scrimmage and let their linebackers and, and safeties clean up whatever gets through. Uh, offensively, uh, uh, they're a big football team. Uh, they've got a lot of big kids, and uh, they like to line up with about four different guys at fullback. You'll see them in the uh, eye set and the power eye. It's something you don't get to see very often anymore. And then they'll go to a spread. And uh, they do a lot of things uh, well. They, they, their quarterback can run. Uh, he can throw. And uh, the receivers have got good hands. And uh, so it's going to be uh, – it's going to take an overall effort from us tonight, both sides of the football, to, to be able to, to beat Hattiesburg tonight. It should be an interesting contest. And uh, Paul's going to be patrolling the sidelines, bringing us notes from the sidelines and doing the statistically speaking that he does every week. And I, I, I pirate a lot of your information. I just want you to know from your from your uh, home turf, the statistics you do, I refer to a lot. And we appreciate all you do. And Kenny will be bringing us the uh, – the, the uh, color commentary and again we want to mention that this is uh, a presentation of uh, WC-Web TV and this will also be shown on uh, CMA 10 TV so we want to express our uh, appreciation to our partners there and especially uh, Ken Roberts and Rebecca Caldwell for all the film work and, the, and the, for all the production work that they do so we're going to take a break to hear from our friends at First State Bank and we'll be back with the head coach of the War Eagles, Coach Todd Mangum after this word. Everybody thinks it's best to be the biggest, so they try to outdo all the rest. Don't let our size fool you. We're big on technology. With us, you get the best of both worlds. Small town, first name friendly, personal service, and the high tech convenience of online services. First State Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. We're big on you. We're just a small town community bank, but we're big on you. Welcome back, and as promised, we have the head coach of the Warriors, Coach Todd Mangum. Coach, appreciate you taking a minute for us. We started out in week one, and you had to deal with a, with a loss, and you tell, you, you tell your kids probably have to get them up. Last week, we came in here and had a big win. Is there a 
get your feet back on the ground kind of deal that goes with that? Well, I mean, you know, it's like I told the players on on Monday. You know, that that's over. You know, new week, new opponent, uh, and and we just we go from there. You know. It's like we always say every week, you know, we want to win a game a week, and this is the next game. This is the biggest game this year so far because it is the next one, and, you know, we have to learn how to put things into perspective. Coach, week to week we ask you, what do you want to accomplish offensively? Now I want to ask you, do or, or have you been accomplishing what you want to accomplish offensively? Well, I, I thought last week we had a good uh, had a good balance. I mean, we had a bunch of yards and everything, throwing and running. You know, this week we've got to be even more balanced in in, in not necessarily in, in run pass, but in consistency we must have balance. Uh, playing against a, a, a good defense, and uh, so every time we have an opportunity to to make a positive play. We have to make a positive play. Gotcha. Let's let's flip the page on that and go to defensively. You say what you want to accomplish. Looking back over the first two weeks, are you accomplishing defensively what you want to see done? Well, so far, I thought last week. I mean, we had, you know, they had less than 150 yards total offense, and this week we've got to really stop the run. Uh, it, not to say Hattiesburg's not a good passing football team, but everything is predicated on the run. And, uh, you know, we've got, to, we've got to stop the run. We've got to do a good job on third down. We've got to get off the field. Uh, the, the key to tonight will be uh, limiting their first down yards, but third down, winning on third down is going to be very, very important for us. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time. We're going to wish you luck. We're going to take a break, a break, and be back with our captains and our starting lineups after this word. I'm a beast. Yeah, I'm in my own zone. It's beast mode time, so go hard or go home. I'm a beast. Yeah, I got it on my mind. See, I came here to shine, so let's get it on the grind. I'm a beast. Yeah, I'm in my own zone. It's beast mode time, so go hard or go home. I'm a beast. Yeah, I got it on my mind. See, I came here to shine, so let's get it on the grind. Step up in the building, swagger on point, right? Put your seatbelt. On, Cause it's gonna be a long night It's gonna be a long fight But then again, maybe not I'm about to get it in Yeah, I got it on my mind Let's end this thing in regulation I ain't thinking overtime Cause I didn't work overtime And I ain't trying to overgrind I transform the beast mode just like Overtime and I ain't trying to overgrind I transform the beast mode just like I came here to ball hard I love this game, it's all I got That's why I'm going all out And give it everything I got Yeah, I give it all I got As if it was my only shot I play the game to win To the end until I pass Pass out, whichever just might come first Quitting's never on my mind I put my heart in this That's why I lay it all on the line So look me in the eyes Please don't be surprised That I push it to the limit Or until I reach the prize Cause I'm a beast Yeah, I'm in my own zone It's beast mode time So go hard or go home I'm a beast yeah. When you sit down at Pop Seafood and Steakhouse, they bring out the homemade coleslaw hush puppies and the family recipe cheese sauce for dipping. Everybody already knows that Pop's has the best all-you-can-eat catfish, but have you tried the blackened or regular ribeye? <laughs> There's nothing like it. Come on Saturday, watch college football, eat lunch, or grab an appetizer. Oh yeah, and don't forget to book Pop's for your private parties. Come join us at Pop's. And bring your family too. Okay, welcome back. We appreciate our friends at First State Bank for uh, making our pre-game show possible. And we're getting ready for the Fred's Super Dollar first quarter. We've got our captains getting ready to go out for the coin toss tonight. Wayne County uh, comes in tonight, of course. Uh, they have started. This is their third game of the season. They had they began with Oak Grove and dropped that uh, decision over there. And then last week came home for the first time and had a resounding win over the Panthers from Equipment High School. And want to keep that positive action going, Ken. We got a tough bunch of Tigers from Harrisburg over here. So we're going to have our hands full tonight. Well, we do more ways than one. They're big. Oh, they're, they're, yeah. they're huge, uh, yeah. big offensive line and. Uh, well, I mean, they, just just look. 
I mean, look right here. Yeah, well, right. Ollie's three seventeen, and I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, those guys. Uh, it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a physical test. You've seen film on them, I know. Yes, we. Well, I've, I've seen uh, the um, equipment game. I mean, the equipment game. The last two games that they played, they had a week off, and uh, they're a big physical football team. Fourteen's uh, a great athlete. Ninety-seven is a tremendous athlete, and uh, Wayne County's going to have her hands full with them tonight. <laughs> Wayne County, some of the folks coming in will give you some statistics. Wayne County has, uh, on the year, they've scored 21 points in the first quarter, quarter, giving up seven. They scored 21 points in the second quarter, giving up 14. They put 27 on the board in the third quarter, giving up 14. And they put seven on in the fourth quarter, giving up 10. They have outscored their opponents, uh, the two opponents, 76 to 35, you know, combining them. Uh, first downs on the year, Wayne County comes in with 44 through two games, giving up 24. Uh, some of our leaders, statistically speaking, are, well, D D Jarvis Chambers is uh, leading all scores with 18 points. DJ Sims has 12, and McCary, our kicker, has 10. Uh, Wayne County, of course, has won the toss. We're here from our public address announcer, uh, Cooper Leggett. Uh, okay, that's so we've deferred the toss to the to the uh, second half, so uh, we'll give you some uh, statistics. We're going to pause and stay with it for the presentation of the colors. This is the Wayne County JR OTC Color Guard. And we're going to try to get with our director in the next couple of weeks and have an interview with him and uh, let him fill in on what all they do at the Junior ROTC here at Wayne County High School. They're very active in school and in community. We see the teams yeah. gathered. We'll have the uh, presentation of the Colors National Anthem, and then we'll have the we'll have our, you can call it a student-led uh, moment of silence or prayer, but we pray here at Wayne County, don't we, Kenny? Sure do. Yeah. And we don't care how many letters we get here. <laughs> and we'll, we'll be silent for the presentation of the Colors. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for a moment of silence and remain standing for the National Anthem and Prayer. During this moment of silence, I ask you to pause to honor the 2,977 men and women that died on September 11, 2001 as a result of terrorist attacks on our country. As painful as that day was and always will be, we know that no single event or act of terrorism can ever destroy who we as Americans are and what we stand for. Please remove all hats as tonight's moment of reverence will be led by senior at Wayne County High School, Kayla Bunch. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for these two teams for the help to be here, for the thrill of the, of the sporting event, and for individuals learning to play the team. Grant that we not take days like this for granted. Give us the grace to play our best, to be a good sport, win or lose, and to honor you with our efforts. We ask you to keep both teams and fans safe on and off the field as we support our boys. In your name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing and place your hand proudly over your heart as we honor America and the men and women of the armed forces serving throughout the world and all the men and women in uniform as Mackenzie Hutto leads us in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home. As we look down here in the end zone, we'll see that the Wayne County War Eagles are preparing to come onto the field, and I understand that they'll be joined in their coming onto the field by the celebration tonight of our back-to-back -back state champions in 02 and 03, Kenny. I hope Steve Gandy doesn't fall down. <laughs> uh, he get trapped. Uh, they're going to run out with them. It's a little interesting, little sidebar, Kenny, and correct me if I'm wrong. The last two times Wayne County equipped, the last time Wayne County equipment played was back in 2002 when uh, we won that first state championship and Hattiesburg beat us. It's the only loss we had that year. That's right. Beat us at Hattiesburg in a monster rainstorm. It rained all week and packed. Well, I'll tell you what, the Tigers are getting crunk down there in the end zone. They got the smoke, and here they come, buddy. There's a, one of the other things about that particular year was we had rain all the way through the season and the field was a total disaster. And everything down here around what you see now on the 10 to 20 yard line on this side uh, was just a horrible shape. And uh, we spent the whole year after the first ball game on trying to get the field fixed and the uh, coaching staff just struggled with it. But that's not going to be an issue here tonight. No, not with this field. And hopefully the rain's done. We did have a game delay tonight, though, with some lightning. So, But we're back on track. We're running about 15 minutes behind. But it's time for some Wayne County High School War Eagle football as the War Eagles and the Tigers get ready to rumble here at Wayne County tonight. Some of the defenses, we'll be looking at the defense first. Some of our leaders, Jamal Poe and, uh, comes in tonight, the junior linebacker with 13 tackles. Tyler Hopkins, a sophomore linebacker with 12 tackles. Keyshawn Cooley with nine. Trey Malalta with nine. Tendrick Parker with nine. And then we move down to some of the defensive linemen. Evans, Jones, uh, making tackles. And King, our linebackers are making the tackles, and we see those defensive linemen gobbling up blockers on every play. Right. And, and that's okay. That's what those linebackers are there for. Anytime you have your secondary making most of the tackles, you may have some issues. <laughs> Which is where we started last year. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, if the defensive front and your linebackers are making the bulk of the tackles, that means that there's not a lot for your safeties and other folks to do except cover anybody that might be downfield. That's what you work for as a defensive coach. But Kerry's fixing to kick it away here, and we'll see what... What goes on Hattiesburg Sporting, they've been the typical looking like LSU all these years. They've got a new set of uniforms that are breaking in here tonight. And he misjudged it, and that's going to cost him dearly as the War Eagles get back there, and they're going to tackle him down about the 10-yard line. Uh, I tell you what, I guess he lost it in the lights, Kenny. He just stepped up and went over his head. He must have. He's going to have the ball around the 12-yard line, so they're going to be a little more merciful than just in the spot. I think uh, the, the quarterback for uh, Hattiesburg, uh, I watched him play against uh, Pedal where they streamed that thing live. We were off that week, I believe. But he's a big kid, about 6'5", about 220 or so. Kenny, is that right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, they don't list a weight and height on the, uh, mm. on the program here, but he is a big, big youngster. Yeah, well, you can look at him, and that's... Uh, when you look at offensive line number 78, you have to weigh him on a cotton scale anyway. He's, he's a big youngster. <laughs> Ollie, and let's see, I believe that's Jones and White up front for Wayne County. There's a handoff with some running room up the middle, and let's see, Jamal Poe's going to, looks like a note. Let's see, that's 43. That's Hayden Shelby back out tonight. Hayden missed, had to sit out last week, but it's good to have him back. And he's on the first tackle for Wayne County. He's one of our linebackers. It's Trayvon Lofton and uh, Good Toys Gandy, number one. White, Ollie, and Jones are up front. Parker, 27. Quentin Hogan has moved from linebacker to safety, number 11. He's a junior. Keyshawn Cooley, number three out there. And then uh, safety, and then Quidarius Purnell, uh, uh, the speedy uh, cornerback over there, number 23. So we're looking at uh, second and seven. There's the toss around the left side. May have a little room there. He's going to put his head down and get out across the 20. It's going to be third and a couple, Kenny. Well, just a good effort, good block on the corner by Hagesburg. Did a good job getting the ball out to around the 20-yard line. 
Third to about three for the Tigers. Pick up of about four yards on the play, setting up a third down and three yards to go for the Tigers. Ken, this is that power football you know, that we were talking about, the way they lined up there. They got the fullback and the tailback in there under center. Line Tailback's in motion. Down. And what we got here? Got a little movement here. I believe that's going to be the illegal procedure against Hattiesburg. That'll back him up five. False start is the call against the Tigers. Put him at third and eight instead of third and three. A little more difficult to manage. It's good to see Hayden back this week. Oh, it is. It really is. He's a uh, he's a big part of that war of the defense. He's going. It's going to take him a little time to get his wheels back under him. Senior uh, started last year, and he's a uh, one of our leaders for us. There's some pressure off the middle, and well, uh, quarterback's looking for those. Going to fire one at the twenty. He's going to make the catch and. Looks like the Tigers are going to get out and get themselves a first down for a nice pitching catch. They're one for one there, Kenny. Well, they did. They eased, eased uh, number 18 out in the – brought him across the field, brought him out in the flats out here. We didn't have a linebacker on him, and uh, he was open. Did a good job, though, to shut him down before we broke it big because he certainly had, uh, had some room. Still going with the uh, original lineup there, the starting lineups. Nobody rotation. Wayne County plays a lot of folks on defense, but they haven't rotated anybody in yet. So Hattiesburg's got their first down and our first and 10 at the 27. There's a the handoff up the middle and uh, pretty good penetration right there. Tough sled in there for him. Did a good job of nose did of uh, just uh, really blowing that play up. Yeah. Holding it up. That was Benito. Yeah, and Shelby's got his uh, second tackle on the night. As you talk about that defensive lineman blowing up that line of scrimmage and those linebackers cleaning up the mess. Jaquan White was crashing in from that end, too. Second thing Hattiesburg does well is that, that's throw the medium route. They do a really good job of throwing out on the edges, uh, anywhere from 7 to 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. That's something that's their bread and butter in the throwing game. And uh, you talked about it, Kitty, and there it goes, and he's going to make the catch. Oh, good defense out there. Corner read that very well over there. When he saw the quarterback turn, he went ahead and shot up, and that's why he was able to make the tackle. Mm -hmm. I think that was uh, oh, Hartfield. Was Brown? Okay. Pennell can really run, and he has great clothes and speed. He's got top end, but he can get to that ball carry in a, in a, in a hurry, and he did on that play. Third and 15 for the Tigers. We've got 8.47 to go in the Fred Superdollar first quarter, and there's a penalty. Trips right. Right on the play. And there's a, another play against Hesburgh, and I know that's not what Hesburgh wants to see. They've, uh, you know, they've, 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 they've had some issues getting started, and uh, new coaching staff, and getting things changing around. And of course, they had a week off, you know, so they may be, they may be a little rusty. So they should bring up a third, about 21. You got Jones playing on the nose tonight. They move him around. Trips right, single back set, the quarterback's looking, and he's going to fire one deep, Kenny. Pennell's got coverage. He's going out of Running bounds. step for step with him, and that's going to bring him a punting situation for the Tigers. So, uh, looks like Deshaun Fallon's going back to receive this punt, and so is DJ Sims. You know, Fallon, uh, we discovered last week, he made a couple, fielded a couple of punts for us, and, uh, and he had a big, big week last week receiving the football. He had a uh, Let's see what he caught. Uh, seven passes for 51 yards last week. So Fowler and DJ Sims are both back to receive back to receive this punt. There's a high snap. He reels it in. It's going to get it away, and it's going to be a nice spiral. It's going to turn over. DJ's going to reel it in here at the 45, and he's going to got Fowler's going to block for him, and uh, pretty good coverage, Kenny. That's a nice punt. Yeah, it was. It. Uh Came down to about our 46, and he got a, only got a four-yard return out of it. So that was a 39-yard uh, punt. Hodo's going to be our quarterback tonight. Dallas Sims, number six. You'll see Elijah Pugh, seven. Fast Freddie Jordan, Jr. Uh, in there. 21, Cortland Sims is in there. Number four is out there, Devontae Ramey. 
foul on. Uh, and the Jarvis Chambers is uh, spread, uh, spread left out here for, for Wayne County. Four man front, like you said, we'd look for. There's a handoff to DJ, and he's making folks miss. Here he goes, Kenny. Running hard down inside the uh, 35 yard line. Well, a good job, but Wayne County's right off the side over there. Did a good job opening that hole. Yeah. You know, we come in, uh, we got 329 yards through two games. We had uh, 205 yards rushing last week. DJ is averaging 3.8 yards a carry through the first two games, and they're going to go to him again. And uh, he's going to make some folks miss and run hard. Kenny and going to get a couple of three yards there on first down. That first run to 17 yards. Move the ball from midfield to 33. Now he picks up another almost four yards. Puts it right around the 29. Up front, Nathaniel. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Kenny. Hodo's looking to throw. Going to fire one to Ramey. Coming across him makes a catch. And they're going to cover him up pretty fast down there about the 26-yard line. It's going to bring up third down. Some of our offensive linemen, 72, Nathaniel Smith, 55, D. Arthur Lane. 54, Zachary Henderson, 58, Dexter Daniels, and 51, Soshan Washington. We're looking at third and seven from the 27. 7.16 to go in the Fred Superdollar first quarter. 19 seconds on the 25 second clock in the, we got a flag here. Gonna, I think be against Wayne County. Must have had somebody moved to illegal formation, but the end for Hagsburg is lined up, I thought, in the neutral zone. Well, I think you're calling it, Kenny, because Fylon's saying it's going against Hasburg, and again, Hasburg's uh, Hasburg's hurting themselves early with penalties. Yeah. I mean, I, it looked to me like, I mean, from my angle, I got a bad angle. It looked to me like he was in a neutral zone. Yeah. That's a that's a first down, Kenny. Roy was uh, you know, down here at about the uh, 20, getting close to the 20 yard line down here. Oh, was looking to throw. Got to throw line final makes catch. Chambers blocking for him. He cuts up the field. Puts the ball down the ground. Chambers scoops it up. First down, goal to go. Fylon made his first catch last week. Put it on the ground. The Jarvis recovered it. First catch tonight. Puts it on the ground. The Jarvis covers it. History does repeat itself. Jarvis really had, a, had his head up right there. It's going to be first and goal from around the three yard line. Derrickus Harris is checking in. Fylon's checking out. Took a pretty good shot. Number 85, tied in. The they got him over here. Corey Sims back there. Going to hand it to Sims, and they're going to hit him uh, to line of scrimmage. It's going to be a short gain, if any. He's probably going to lose the yard back to the four. DJ Sims on the carry for the Warriors. Hit the did a really good job of jamming that up that time, too. Five runs checking back in. Harris checks out. Sims and Raymond right, Chambers left. DJ's in the backfield with Hodo with a second and goal from the five. 6-19 and counting in the Super Dollar first. Oh, there's a jailbreak up the middle and Hodo sacked at the 11 or 12. Well, we did not do a good job of sealing that inside. Hodo sacked for a loss on the play. We caught a break early with that fumble. We've got to capitalize. You get these opportunities, Kenny. Third and goal from the 11. Trips right for Hodo. Chambers is out here one-on-one -on -one by himself. Hodo's going to come to the right and make the pitch. And uh, there was all kind of bumping going on down there. Uh, trying to run the slant on the post. Yeah. So I think we'll probably try a field goal here. We'll have a field goal attempt coming on. Should be a 27-yard attempt. Reggie will be, uh, Reggie Stewart will be the holder. McCary will kick it and Palmer will be snapping. What we got here, Kenny? Uh, 17. 27 yards. 27 yards. There's the kick and it's up, and I believe it's going to be good, Kenny. He's money. He is. It's good. So, Wayne County uh, gets the ball down in scoring position and starts off with three points. So, I think that's our first field goal on the year. I believe you would be correct. About sir. first good. I think we might have tried one, but I'm, that's the no, first. No, I think that's the first uh, first, first one. Goal. Okay. So. Okay. I'll tell you what, Kenny, there's a good crowd from Wayne County here tonight. There's a nice crowd, and not a bad contingent from Hasburg made its way over here tonight. Wayne County be kicking off for the second time with a three to nothing lead here with 5.37 to go in the Fred's Super Dollar first quarter here. 
and purchase a t-shirt from Wayne County High School. He kicked that thing pretty deep. He kicked it down here about the 15 in the air last time. Let's see what he elects to do this time. Going to launch it to kind of a little high. It's going to come down here to about the 25, and he called for a fair catch. So Wayne County takes the field again, and we've got uh, looks like the same alignment going in there that we had the, the first time defensively. So this is the first time I've really recalled through the, this year, through this third game, that we've seen the same defensive personnel in there through two series in a row. Well, I think part of the reason that is Hedgeburg's offensive line. you you got to have your best guys. <laughs> Uh, up front. All righty. Hasbro's got a first down just inside their 25. So we'll say the 24. We're down in the four-man front, three linebackers. There's a handoff up the little Boom! Hayden Shelby right on the spot again, Kenny. Good, He's, good job by Hayden. He's got three tackles already tonight. We've got a timeout. We're going to take a timeout to uh, see what's going on around Wayne County football land, and we'll be back after this break with more of the Fred Superdollar first quarter. See you after the break. Ken and Tisha Snyder and Farrell West family-owned S&W Collision located on Mississippi Drive in Waynesboro will restore your vehicle to its pre-accident condition. Let us take care of the details. We specialize in auto body collision repair. S&W will handle your insurance claims for you. We make sure only quality parts and paint are used to restore your vehicle. An accident can wreck your car. Don't let it wreck your life. Come see the best. Come see Ken or Farrell at S&W Collision. Okay, we're back after the break. I think that was a heat break, if I'm not mistaken, Kenny. I think you'd be right, Danny Don. <laughs> <Howard. laughs> Let's see what the Tigers can do here with uh, second and eight. Jones is off that ball quick. There's all the after the quarterback's going to bury him out there and uh, get the hit on the quarterback. <laughs> Eight, Quarterback eight, pressures, uh, Ron Lally's got three coming in tonight. That's his fourth. Paul, our, stat, uh, our statistician, uh, statistician, among many other things. I think that's one reason you haven't seen anybody switching out just yet is that they need their quickest guys to uh, to make that penetration. I'll tell you what, between Ali and, uh, and Benito, that's a tough choice mm -hmm. to make. And I'll tell you Please what, uh, and I know you're not doing this, but that number 50, that's White, he's a starter, two-year starter out there as well. Right, look here, Kenny, that's Trey Mine Lofton on pressure with the screen, and he could not make the catch. Trey Mine Lofton was coming off of the pressure, 216-pound yeah. linebacker, and uh, old, uh, old Ronald had that barge. <laughs> the big aircraft carrier was closing in on him, too. I tell you what, they only had 42 people over in front of him, too. So if he had caught that football, he'd been trouble. Yeah. Number six, DJ Sims. Sam's and Fowler are back, second kick. So we'll see how this, this punter had a real nice high kick a while ago. Turned over him, pretty spiral, turned over him. Let's see how he does this time. There's a little. Hey, blocked it! Tyree Evans here! Tyree Evans makes the block! And uh, I believe that's Pinnell that's got it down there at the one-yard line. Sophomore, 99, Tyree Evans, I believe, Kenny. <laughs> Saw his name in the paper, and just he got to looking at the headline. <laughs> the football. But that gives Wayne County a first and goal on the two. Number 98, Quindarius Bivens on the block. Well, I say Quindarius Bivens on the blocks, but uh, what they're reading from the public address system down there, that would be another sophomore, Quindarius Bivens, and he's one of our leading tacklers on the team as well coming into the nice well, contest. The thing you don't want to do here too now, Marshall, is uh, you want to back up like we did the last time. Looks like there was a little, looked like it might have been trying to run a pick. <laughs> he's trying to hit foul line going out around behind uh, – Chambers down there, cross him up. Elijah Pugh, number seven, is in the game now, running back, placing D.J. Sims, and Elijah is averaging uh, 4.25 yards a carry. And he's going to score. And a touchdown, Wayne County, Elijah Pugh. Touchdown, Wayne County! Number seven, Elijah Pugh. Special teams, Kenny, what do you say? I mean, 
special teams 8-0 lunch against Oak Grove. And tonight, uh, there's a big special teams play where we get to block in the touchdown results from it. I'll tell you what, just a, uh, just a great job. You take advantage of the opportunities you get. And that PAT is good. You know, Reggie did a good job scooping that. Palmer's a great snapper. He's been doing it for a couple of years and he's really on the money. But Reggie does a good job putting that ball down. That one kind of tried to get away from him, but he got it down and that point, the extra point is good. So Wayne County, 452 to go in the Fred Super Dollar first quarter. Wayne County up 10 to nothing. Well, yeah, with well, the and the thing is is the last uh, the last score was at 537. So uh, you basically got uh, less than a minute. Got a little Ozzy Osbourne cranking out through the P8. A little crazy train action going on. That doesn't seem that doesn't seem right. If we scored that field goal with 537, the Rams gonna kick it high and it's high. gonna be a fair call down here again at the 26-yard line. So the third possession of the night for the Tigers. Uh, the Warriors have had two possessions and scored a field goal, and they had the second possession as a short field from the two-yard line on the Bibbins blocked punt. Got some new folks in there now up front. There's Carter 59, Mike Sims 31, and number and Bibbins number 98. We'll tell you about some of how these guys have been doing. 98 is a sophomore. Bibbins has got eight tackles on the on the year coming in. And uh, Sam's number 31. He missed a, he was didn't play it against Oak Grove, but he's out there. Played some last week and he's back. So we're starting to see some substitutions up front now. There's a little running room. Breaking tackles getting on the corner, and let's see, there's a flag. Maybe a it may have been that receiver might have been holding, Kenny. Might have been just a little bit of a hold. Tendrick Parker on the stop out there for Wayne County. Let's see what, what they got for us. And uh, where, the, where the flag was thrown was out away from where the tackle was made, and that used to indicate something went on out there. It looked like there was a hole. That's what they're doing, Kenny. And I tell you what, again, uh, Hasbro's having trouble with the penalties. I mean, you were catching breaks early, and we'll take them. We got a season's worth of bad breaks to get so great. So we got a few breaks last week that got us going, and a few breaks here early, and you got to take advantage of these things. They should put the ball somewhere around the 22, 23-yard line. It looks like it's 22. So that'll be first and about 14. Poe and Shelby are the inside linebackers. There's a no pitch out there, and uh, he fell down. Pretty good run. Got another flag, Kenny. Boy, some hard running. Yeah, that quarterback made that pitch just as he was going down. Another hole, Kenny. That's not going to make the Hattiesburg faithful or whatever they had. That'd be home cooking. <laughs> and the problem is, is the spot of that foul is going to put it inside the 20. Well, it's going to put it back around the 11-yard line. Okay, uh, Sims and uh, Carter and Bibbins check out. Jones, Ollie, and White check back in. They rotating those three front gave, the, gave that starting three a little break, and we'll see what good it does for him, Kenny. Keeping fresh legs out there to get after that Hattiesburg offense. Marshall, that's going to make it about a first and 25 or so. With 4-11 to go in the Fred Superdollar first quarter. Two receivers out left, two backs in the back with him. Quarterbacks back to throw. There's pressure up the middle. Launching one deep. He's got behind the coverage. The man was running. I tell you what, that young man was stretching that field pretty far, pretty far Kenny. Yeah, he can throw it. Yeah, and uh, the safety, uh, Keyshawn Coon was back there in coverage, and he was uh, he was gaining a little ground on that safety there at the end. Setting up a second down for the Tigers. Ball spotted at their own 11-yard line. 16 seconds and counting on the 25-second clock. 3.57 to go in the Fred Superdollar. First quarter, two back set, quarterbacks in the gun. Wide out both ways. There's a Jones off that ball pretty quick, kind of messing things up and... 
Had about a three or four couple yard gain there, Kenny. Well, they tried to run a little trap on the inside. And uh, Wayne County did a good job. He gave up, gave up about three yards, maybe four. Looks like three. The ball's gonna be on the 14. Benito coming off that nose, getting back there, getting their hand around those ankles and bringing him down. Well, it's hard to trap a guy that ain't there when you get there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he just, you know, his first three steps are just so quick. Two receivers out wide right for the Hattiesburg quarterback. Keeps the folks in there to help. He's back to throw. He's looking deep. He's going to launch one down here, and Parker's in coverage. And that one's going to go out of bounds. Parker's had him on the corner, and uh, Cooney was coming in over the top to help him out. So that quarterback's picking himself up again. He's taking a few licks out there, Kenny. Well, he is. I tell you, we're, we're doing a pretty good job of covering. I mean, the, the throws that he's making are on the money. Um, I mean, they're almost catchable. But uh, Wally's just just leading his guys a little too much or getting it a little too close to the sideline. But our, our DBs have been right with him. And these receivers, another thing, these receivers for uh, for Hattiesburg are big, tall guys. So, you know, you got to say, we're, we're dodging a bullet every time he throws one of those things downfield. On the punt again, blocked the last one. Five line and centers back standing in the 46. The 46 of the Tigers, that is. There's a snap. There's a nice punt. He's got a good spot on that thing. DJ's going to make the catch at the 50. Looking for room. Got a little room, Kenny. He's at the 40. They're going to call him. Got a block, block in the, the bag down here. I thought I thought the Warriors would let him turn around, but I mean, you know, we're not going to fuss about that. I just 36 yards. Yeah. I tell you what, I like though. I like seeing those those punt guys catching that football. You know, I hate to see that thing hit the ground. And uh, DJ's you, you and about 99 percent of the coaches across. <laughs> And yeah, uh, it's kind of damp out there. It's rain pregame, feels wet, balls probably wet. They've done a good job handling that thing. Wayne County's going to get the ball in just across midfield, just inside Tiger territory for a first down. I'm going to call it 50. Call it 50. From the side of the foul. The 50. I'm not going to go. The 50 and a half. Okay. Daniels, Washington, Smith, Bruner, Lane, Henderson up front. Hodo's going to throw it out here, foul on Miss Catch at 50. Looking for a little help down there, blocking for uh, the Jarvis, and he's going to be out about probably eight yard gain on that, maybe nine. I'll tell you what, Jarvis did a good job. Stay on his guy, stay on that corner, keep him push back, push back, push back, and then uh, we get right behind him and uh, and run the football and just do a good job of picking up the side. Fallon did a good job. Second and three. There's a handoff to DJ. He's going to put his head down and run hard and going to be. At about, they're going to spot him at about the, just short of the 40. He's going to like about, about a yard. Game about a yard. Bay Bring up third and one, 226 to go in the Fred Superdollar yeah, first quarter here. Wayne County High School, War Eagle football. As your War Eagles take on the Tigers from Hattiesburg tonight, leading 10 to nothing. Two receivers both ways. Hands it. No. Oh, they blew oh, that. Oh, they blew. They did, Kenny. They, uh, they got through there and dropped him for about a two-yard loss. Well, we got whipped on the right side of the line of scrimmage over there. The right side, we just got whipped. Looks like Wayne County's going to line up and go for it here on fourth down. At the 41, will they try to draw them off sides, Kenny, or will they go for it? I don't, th I don't think so. I think we're going to go for it. The way the defense has been playing, uh, I think they're all going to going to keep it, it. and He's they're going to stop him short. So you got to hand it to the Tigers. They have stepped up and uh, stopped Wayne County. That's the first time Wayne County's not able to score on possession. 139 to go in the third Super Bowl first quarter. Wayne County turns it over on downs, and this is about as good a field position as the Tigers have had out across their own 40. Well, it is, and now you, you turn into your defense, and you got a sort of three and out, you four and out, so you got to turn to your defense and get back on the field again. White, Jones, Molly, up front. I got a tight end of this side with an eye formation. There's some running room, and uh, oh, we got a hold on the corner. Trey Mon, and we get Trey a Mon had a hold too. Fifty-three had him with both hands and his teeth. Forty-one, Xavier Yancey on the carry around the right side. There is a flag on the play. 
What is that? Four or five holding penalties already on the Tigers. Three yards in front of foul. Three yards in front of foul. Replay first down. Should put it about 30, okay, 31. Yeah, you watch it. Our defense is playing pretty, we're not having a lot of success, but the Tigers seem to be shooting themselves in the foot as oh, much as are. anything else. They just seem like they're just right on the verge. They, they're, they're executing what, what they're doing, they're executing very well. And uh, they're just, uh, they, if they ever get their act together, we could be in trouble tonight. You gotta put him on the horse, and you gotta make the run. Ronald Ollie, Ronald Ollie's gonna track him down over there, Kenny, on the sideline. That big man's covered a lot of ground. That's 317 chased him down. Tell you what, uh, they had a bead on him over there. <laughs> I mean, what do you say about that effort? It was a great effort by Wally. 37 yard line, second down. He picked up six. They're going to need another 14. I love to see those big guys get out there and chase those guys down. You know, a lot of them won't do that. We can defy us all along. <laughs> Back to the throw. There's some pressure. Going to get after him. Going to throw the screen. Going to make the catch. He catches it this time. Oh, what a play. Well, uh... There were all kind of folks in Wayne County out there on him. I don't know who the first ball was there, but he made, the running back made a great well, escape. <laughs> Looked like Houdini down there. Hammond on the street class. I think uh, the guy that broke that up. Number 43, Shelby in on the tackle for the Warriors. For Wayne County, was 32. Jamal Pope, junior linebacker. Third and 10. At the 40. Inside 30 seconds of the first Super Dollar first quarter. Three man front for Wayne County. Jones is firing off the ball, and there's Ollie coming in. They're closing in, and we're going to get him. Boy, he doesn't need to make it back. From, what he does is make it back to the line of scrimmage. That was, uh, dude, that was your defensive front. All three of them in on that tackle. Ollie, White, and Benito. All three got a hand on him. Can you like to see that? That's going to take us through one quarter. After one quarter, Wayne County is going to be up by a score of 10 to nothing. And that's going to bring the Freds and Super Dollar first quarter to a close. We'll take a break and see what's going on around uh, Wayne County High School Warrior football land and be back after this break. Sears is locally owned and operated by the Walker family in Waynesboro. We carry Craftsman and Husqvarna lawnmowers plus every kind of lawn and yard equipment you could imagine. Of course, we have the best and most popular Craftsman tools. Have you been in the store lately to see our Sealy mattresses? Don't forget, we carry every appliance you could need for your home or office. Kenmore, Maytag, GE, LG, Samsung, Whirlpool, and Frigidaire. For faster delivery, let us place your Sears order. We'll get it right. Sears in Waynesboro. Okay. Uh... We're going to start this second quarter, Kenny, with Wayne County getting the ball, and uh, Quitman's going to have to punt it. That ball is set at the... Uh, Hattiesburg. I'm right. sorry. What am I talking about? Did well, I say Quitman? Well, you see, did. you started that mess a while ago, so you brought them Yeah, but we were off the air. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you try to keep your semi... I'm embarrassed. I'm, gonna I'm not going to say no word. Nah. Here we go. No, I'm going to have to move because... You'll explode <laughs> All right, here we go. This uh, second quarter brought to you by Ace Cleaners and Hutto Furniture Company. Oh, he's reaching for the flag. That's gonna be that's gonna be uh, five yards though. Well, we got a lot of activity going down here with DJ, and but it's all for naught because. You got flags downfield. All right, Kenny, sort that out for us. Well, both of them are going to be against Wayne County. But I think it's going to be running into the kicker and not uh, roughing the kicker. Not going to be anything called against Quitman, though. <laughs> yeah. I like it'll be a – like it'll be a – and with, with Hasburg, I, I mean, I think you, you look at it like this. You, you only get five yards to kick. Do you, do you want to kick it again or go ahead and take the kick and uh, 
back Wayne County up 10 yards from where the ball wound up from the spot of the foul. Well, you, you know. Which would be a good choice. They're having a little, they, they've had one blocked, and that one wasn't a long one. I don't know where I wouldn't take the. I'd let it go. But, of course, I say, I don't even know who. I don't even know who. <laughs> right, yeah, but is this is what I'm talking about. If you take the. Block in the back. Block in the back. That penalty is accepted. You take that because you're, not, you're going to have to kick it again. Yeah. And you won't take a chance on getting the ball. So you're going back Wayne County up another 10 yards. Hodo and company will be uh, get the ball. And that punt was only about about a 30-yard punt, 31-yard punt. Right at the 20-yard line. Back to the Warrior 20-yard line. First down, Warrior Here we go. Elijah Pugh is in the backfield again with uh, Hodo. Two receivers uh, both ways for Hodo. And there's a few running hard, making folks miss, and they're going to hit him after about a four-yard gain. Boy, he took a pretty good lick right there at the end, didn't he? I'll tell you what, Hattiesburg is a big, strong, physical team, just like you said they would be. Ball is shy of 25. I'll just say the 24 and give him a second and six. Hodo's looking to throw. There's one out here to Raymond makes the catch, turns outside. Here he goes. Running down the sideline, back inside across, down to the 50, 45 yard line. First down, Lori Dog! You say the 54 yard line or the 45? I said 45. Uh, no, you're not going to hang that one on me. So it is. Ramey's got four catches coming into the night for a 16-yard average. And there's uh, Hodo's going to hand it off, and they're going to tackle the carrier back for a loss. That's Pew again. Elijah Pugh, the ball carrier, hit in the backfield. Tell you, that defensive front for Hasbro's tough. By they really are. Eight, Sullivan for the Tigers. Well, about two yards on the play. Second and 12. Hodo's looking to throw. There's one out here. Makes the catch out there at the 40. There's uh, Ramey again. Hodo passed the point to four to Monte Ramey. Ramey came in, and like I said, with uh, four catches on the, on the year. He's got two tonight. Third about five to go. 10.43 to go in the ace cleaner. Sato Furniture Company second quarter. Trips right for Hodo. He's going to leave here. He's going to leave the ball with Elijah Pugh, and they're going to stop him after about a yard. Yeah, he didn't get much. Elijah Pugh up the middle for the Warriors. Daniel was out a yard. DJ Sims is checking in. Pugh checks out. Tackle made by number six, Marlon Richardson for the Tigers. So he picked up about two. It's going to be a fourth and about two. Pretty tough sled out there, Kenny. Long two. Sims is a tight end out there. Now they moved him to tight end. Two receivers right, one left. Sims is in the backfield with. Oh, they're going to say Cortland Sims is tied in. DJ's the running back. Couple of Sims. Simses. Hodo's going to look from that left side, turn up field, and he's going to be close. They're going to, they're going to be he's short, going to be Kenny. Short. Going to be short. Close, but no cigar. So Wayne County's going to turn it over on downs. This is the second time tonight they've done that, if I'm not mistaken. Boy, he was so close. Hodo, the quarterback keeper on the left side, turn over on downs. I don't think First they... down for the Tigers. Ball spotted at the... Got some new defensive folks. Evans and 98. Uh, 88 Evans and 45 Pew. Chandler Pew. There's a couple of sophomores and one junior up front now for Wayne County. Uh, some new linebackers in there. There's 30 out there. Hopkins. And I think old Denzel Bonner, number 44, is out there, Kenny. We like the way he plays. There's a hand up, hand off. Well, he and, just uh, popped out of the middle. He I sure did. What, he rolled off a, off a tackle, did a good job. He got a first down, and he's calling for a face mask call, but he's not going to get it. He's going to have enough for a first down. He picked up about 11 yards. Picking up a Tiger first down. Ball now spotted at the... Our defensive backs the remain the same. Yard line. But... Uh, Linebackers uh, remain the same. I said we got that new defensive front up there for us. Bunch of young guys up there. There's another hand off with some room around the side. That's pretty good defense right there, Kenny, at the 50. Kimball did a good job running with the guard pulling. They did a good job just to follow his blockers. All you can do is take the legs out from the blockers and try to trip him up. That defender took on that blocker out there that was leading his way and stopped him up out there in the open field and just kind of 
the, the, the running back just ran into that wall and they got him down there after a nice gain on first down. So the second you know, long five, they can they can do a lot of different things here now. Mix it up a little. Now the Hopkins is going to give chase. Quarterback is going to turn it around the right side and run. He's going to get himself a first down. You said he could run, yeah, Kenny. Quarterback keeper on the right side. Picking up a and run he did down. for a first down. I think he's going to be around the 42-yard line or so. Asperger's starting to have a little success offensively here now. That's their first time to get back to back first downs. First foray into War Eagle territory, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. There's a handoff, and I tell oh, you what, he, he is. He, 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 ball we got the ball loose. loose. And uh, ball I see. Oh, well, they turn it over again and hurt themselves. And uh, I don't know who got that, Kenny. I don't know. I saw Denzel Bonham getting up and clapping his hands. I didn't see who got up from the bottom. Of the I, I didn't see it either. But Wayne County dodged a bullet right there. We're getting the turnover. That was uh, 32. Yeah, 32. That's Jamal Poe, junior Poe. linebacker. Jamal on the Johnny on the spot. Jamal on the spot for the fumble recovery. There's a pass out here to Sims. He's at the 40. Turns up 50 yard line running hard. And uh corner is gonna probably get himself first down. First down. Listen to this. Corner Sims comes in tonight with uh two catches for 62 yards. He's averaging 31 yards a catch coming in tonight. That was a nice catch. Here's another pass out here to him. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Kenny. And there he goes down there close to the 40 yard line on two receptions in a row. Combination is working. He uh, picked up 12 yards on the first one, not quite as much on this one. We'll put the ball to 42. That's good for six yards. He'll be a second about four. He's doubled his receptions on the year tonight. He had two coming in. He got two in a row right there. We've got a timeout on the field. We're at 8.13 to go in the Ace Cleaners Hutto Furniture Company second quarter. We're going to take a break and be back after this word. Hi, I'm Robert Laypath, and here at Newsom's, it's my job to make your house a home. Our cabinets are affordable yet extremely custom. If you're interested in a hand-built, top-of-the-line cabinet or more affordable, quality pre-built, we've got it. Thinking about new floors? We have the best selection of quality floors, plus we offer custom design at no charge. We offer hardwood, ceramic, brick, carpet, custom showers, granite countertops, and much more. When we do it, it's done right. Newsom's Affordable Cabinets and Flooring, making your house a home. Okay, Kenny, we were discussing in the, you know, Wayne County's uh, finding some pretty tough sweat and running running that football against this. Well, we're, we're, I mean, yeah, yeah, just, I'm, we're getting whipped on the inside. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, it just and, is what it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, no, no criticism is not a just we're getting yeah. whipped on the inside. <laughs> so you got to try to go to the edges and uh, loosen them up some. DJ's in the backfield with Hodo. Hodo's going to hand it to him, and there he goes, going to run hard, going to get inside the 40, going to be close to first down. I think he's going to be about a yard short. Wayne County finds themselves in a third down again, Kenny. And we dare say it's two down territory because they've gone for, they've gone for it uh, twice on fourth down already but they've, tonight. But turn it over on downs both times. So let's see if we can get that first down right here. Hunter's going to throw it out here, and there's the catch to the Jarvis Chambers. And, uh, Boy, Hansburg played that. They really did. And uh, he's going to be at the line of scrimmage. And Wayne County's going to put this one away, Kenny. Roney's on tonight to punt for his first time tonight. This is going to be interesting right here. Hesper's got one guy back. Wayne Kenny's going to take a time out and talk about it. Wayne County has charged their first time out for the first half. So uh, a lot of what we do, this again, I want to uh, you know, talk about our sponsors. And uh, yeah, Hutto Furniture Company and Ace Cleaners bring us our second quarter. Uh, we have uh, Rebecca Caldwell, who is our, uh, our, our production crew staff, along with Ken Roberts. And she's uh, 
taking pictures from the fans and such. We're going to take a break and see what, what, what's going on in the world of football land. We'll be back after this break. Try to get some field position here. Play some fairly old field position game, Kenny. Kingsburg's looking for a fake here. Yeah, uh, Corlin Sims would be the one they might snap it over there too. But no, they're going to kick. Good snap. Ronnie's going to punt it. Nice high punt. It's going to be hit the ground inside the 20 and take a. Uh, well, it doesn't take any. Just go straight up in the air. So. Ronnie's punt down by number 50, Juan White. That's 20-yard punt. Harrisburg will have the ball at the 20. First down, 10 yards to go. 20 to 20, huh, Kenny? 20 yard line. 20 to 20. Boy, you hope on one of those you get a little better bounce out of it today. Mike Sims, Larry Carter, and Tyree Evans up front for Wayne County now. Uh, Hopkins, number 30. Poe, 32. Shelby, 43. Denzel Bonner, 44. 
Timothy Parker, 27. Hogan, 11. Cooley, 3. And uh, Canelo, 23 out there. That's your Warrior defense. And there's Mike Sims going to be the first one on the spot there. And uh, off his defensive end position, Hopkins back there. Going to lose a little bit on first down. Jamal Poe coming out of that middle. And Tyree Evans as well. A good, good job up front for Wayne County that time. That young bunch up front, Kenny. The young guns out there. Second down and about 11 yards to go for the Tigers. Second 11 for the Tigers. Spread it out a little bit this time. Looking for there's some pressure and a nice oh, man, what a throw. throw out there under pressure. He's going to get the ball out across the 25-yard line, and we'll see what's going to bring up third down and maybe three or four. Looks like third and four. Yeah. Number 43, Hayden Shelby, and number 23 today. Almost got a block. Time out on the field. We got a heat timeout, so we're going to take a timeout and see what's going on in Warrior Football Land and be back after the break. Deep into our eyes because our focus is keen. It's all heart, all hustle, all power, all skill. 15% of concentrated power of will. 5% pleasure, 10% pain, and 100% reason to remember the name. Click, clack, click, clack, other teams get back. Under all my boys and we here to represent that. You know how we do it, we protect this house. Pouncing on the field like a tiger on a mouse. It's a rumble in the jungle, we the kings of the beast. Big game cavellas, either famine or you feast. And we a pack of hungry lions that you cannot tame. And like EA Sports, we in the game. 50% hustle, 20% skill. Okay, here we go. Third and four on the 26-yard line for the Tigers. So if Wayne County can hold here, Kenny, the punt, the little field position battle there, uh, may pan out. But it's up to Wayne County's defense right now to force these Tigers into a punting situation. It's going to be tough to do because four yards is not very much for Edgebrook drop in. It they hasn't can, been so far. They can root it out, man, and they've got, the, they've got the guys back here to do it. They, can, they, don't, they get a lot of yards after contact. He's going to throw one out there, and uh, it's going to overthrew over his receiver, huh, Kenny? I was losing. Is that what he did? Was he a little over, over through him? You know, these coaches know what to do. It's funny how they know what to do, isn't it, Kenny? <laughs> Well, it helps if you do it for a living. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you don't know what to do, you don't make do it for a living very long. They got that field position. That's what they're shooting for. Filing and Fidel back. I have seen some that kept Josh for a long time. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's a. I'll tell you what, his knee was on the ground, Kenny. It that's going to be a Wayne was. County's ball. It and uh, that's a, another critical mistake. Another critical mistake by the Tigers. The Tigers have definitely been their own worst enemy tonight. I tell you, Hattiesburg, could, you, you couldn't pay them to, to, to shoot themselves in the foot as bad as they have tonight. I mean, they, they really have. They have so much potential all over themselves. Elijah Pugh is going to check it in. Number 57 is out there on the offensive line right now for Wayne County. That's uh, Alex McGill. He's a senior, 327-pounder. He's going to lose the ball. Look here. Elijah Pugh is running hard and inside, maybe inside the five. That's a few up the middle for the Warrior ball carrier. Oh, this ball to the Tiger five-yard line. That's a, he's got about nine yards. That's a lot tougher. Yeah. That's one of the best surges we've had on the offensive line tonight. Second one. At the five. Hodo's going to look to throw the ball. Going to fire one across the middle of the slant. Touchdown, the Jarvis Chamber. We've seen that several times this year already, haven't we, Kenny? We sure have. That's his fourth touchdown on the year. Is it the Jarvis's? And, uh... 
I'm going to carry on the kick. The PAT point is up, and it is good. We'll stay with the action here. 5 12 to go in the uh, Ace Cleaners. Up there, furniture company, second quarter. Wayne County has really done what they needed to do, Kenny. They've had some breaks. They got the block kick, uh, they got the block punt, and they scored. Then they got the you know, the punter had to go down, scoot the ball, put his knee down. They took advantage of those opportunities. You know, we've picked up 14 points off of that. Well, and, and, you know, you take advantage of what you give, you know, what, what they give you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, first half on that first possession down here, when we got down inside the five on the two, uh, after the block punt, we had a great opportunity there and, and just uh, and didn't, you know, just didn't do it. I, um, when we kicked that field, I was trying to look here. No, we didn't do it. That was just block punt we scored on. We drove from the 50 down to the 3 and had a first and goal and wound up with a fourth and goal for the 10. Yeah. That settled for a field goal. Yeah. So backing up is not what you want to do. There's a kick. He's not going to call. He's going to try to scoop it up. And I tell you what, that was uh, – he went for a kitty. He was fired with disaster on that, but he reeled it in. And Hasbro's got the ball out there across the 35-yard line. Ollie and White and Jones checked back in up front. They've had them a couple of series to catch the breath, Kenny. So that's that last defensive front, that second defensive front, did a great job on those last two series. Well, it, it, the thing is, Haysburg's got five minutes here in the, in the left and a half. If they get out and get a score, 17-7 rather than 21-7. Yeah. So uh, you, you, you get, get it to a two-score game. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's where Wayne County's defense has really got to step up. Put the ball on the ground. Key. Look at Ryan Arley's oh, got it. He's going. Ryan Arley. Touchdown, Wayne County, 317 pounds, rolling toward the end zone. Oh, boy, boy. he just went airborne down there. We don't need that. <laughs> That's 300 pounds of rolling thunder. Believe me, Ronald will tell it this week at school. Ronald Wally's not shy about talking about Ronald Wally. Uh, oh, what a game he's having tonight. That would be one for the ages for him. I think that was about a uh, – trying to look at it. He, he picked it up around the 36-yard line. Flag on the play. False start is the ball. Okay, Wayne County, the kick was good, but uh, false start, so they'll have to kick it again. Kenny uh, – this kind of reminds me of what's happening to Hattiesburg is what happened to us. It don't grow. It don't grow. Uh, yeah, I lay awake at night. Too, <laughs> see, uh, seven turnovers, two pick sixes. Yeah. I mean, it just. I'm telling you, that's a. Again, I, I mean, I'm not saying I, we're taking advantage of the opportunities. We're doing the things we need to do, just yeah. like Old Grove did when they beat us. But that's uh, that football team's got a lot of potential down there. I'm talking about the Tigers. Oh, they do? Absolutely. Good snap. Kick is up. And he is going to be good again. So, Wayne County goes up 24 to nothing with 4.59 to go in the Ace Cleaners Hutto Furniture Company second quarter. What you got on your mind there, Kenny? Uh, 13 seconds. We get 14 points. Away. Well, you know, we kind of had that same thing a while ago. We had about in the first quarter. Uh, ten points and about. Let's see what the machines got going He's for us. Paul Key's been quiet. Paul, we're good to hear. Glad to hear from you. What you got for us? Marshall Hattiesburg with 50 yards of total offense, beating Ronald Wiley with that 35-yard total return, almost as many yards as the Tigers' offense. Paul, we've seen a little bit of everything, and it looks like the Tigers are kidding. Not talking about their own worst enemy, but Wayne County's doing what they need to do with the opportunities they're given. Thanks, Paul. We appreciate that update. Did he say 30 or 31? 30. I thought he said 35, but that's just me. And oh my goodness, they got the ball on the ground again, but the whistle had blown. So he said that uh, the Tigers had 50 yards offense, and Ollie had 30 or 35 yards on the uh, return. So he had as much, almost as much offense as the uh, Tigers did. Looks like Hansburg get the ball somewhere around the 26 or seven. 
That seemed like an early whistle to me, but I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, mercy whistle. Mercy whistle. All right, we got some new folks in there. Pews on the nose. Carter's out there. Number uh, is, is a defensive lineman, and is Mike Sims. So Chandler, they move him around a pretty good bit. Number 45, he plays on the edge and also in the middle. There's Vittorius Gandy going to plant the corner. Picked off. That's Tremont Lawson, number 36 with interception. 216 pounds. Going to be drug. No. He's, yeah, they got his knee down to 25. Vittorius Gandy came off the edge and stuck that quarterback when he turned it loose. And Tremont Lawson made the pick. That's his first pick on the year. And now, not only the wheels come off the wagon, but the spares bounced out, too. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere in the bushes. They don't even have a spare to put on. Wade County scores here. This, this thing's it's getting out of hand. It's tough for them to crawl out of this hole. Sims in the backfield with Hodo. Drinkus Harris is in there. Uh, out right. Hodo's looking to throw. Going to fire one down here. Number 19 makes a catch and going to work hard down there close to the 11-yard line. That is... Yeah, Meek Wallace on the catch. Wallace is, comes in tonight with two catches for 19 yards on the year. That gives him uh, three catches. Hodo's going to hand the ball to Sims. He's going to run hard, breaking tackles down to about the six-yard line. Well, this is, this is one of those things where you, you've got the blood vessel open. Just go ahead and open it on up and let it bleed out. I mean, that's, uh, and, you know, you, you know, we noticed it a while ago. You start to kind of see that on that defensive line now of, uh, of, of Hattiesburg. <laughs> see if we can keep leaning on them here and see what happens. Hodo's going to look the throw, going to fire one out here. Oh, that is a... Catch. Touchdown catch. Is that, is that Wallace, number 19? For yes. yes. Wallace on the catch. That's a good catch, Kenny. Absolutely. In the double coverage. <laughs> Not a bad throw either. Hodo's got two touchdowns on the night. And brings his total right to probably uh, eight on the year. That's a nice recovery by Reggie on the snap and uh, going to put it up and it's going to be good. So, woo, 31. That's uh, 17 points in about the last minute, minute and a half. And uh, we just stay with it. Okay, okay, okay. Just 3.51 to go in the Ace Cleaners Hutto Furniture Company second quarter. Wayne County up by a score of 31 to nothing over the Tigers from Hattiesburg. A minute and 16 seconds and we put 21 points on the board. That's, uh, that's devastating. We know how that feels. Absolutely. <laughs> And the thing is, Hattiesburg, I mean, you, you look at them. Oh, and they're so see, close. Uh, yeah, they, they are They are just on the edge of being a really good football team. They've got so much talent. And I'm going to tell you, for a coach, that, that's one of the most frustrating things is when you have a night like tonight when everything goes bad and you've got a group of kids like you do, you, you've got to try to keep your heads up and you can't dwell on all the bad stuff. You've just got to get them out there and get something good to happen and uh, to get that switch to flip, you know, get it flipped back the other way. And here we go. We got uh, Ollie's back in there with uh, Jones and uh, Jaquan White. The front three that we started with, 44, Bonner, 30, Hopkins, linebackers. Uh, Poe and uh, Shelby in the middle. There's a little running room around. Got a hold on 97. Oh, man. What a big lead right there. there. Yes, is that, who is that out there? Some of those big defensive linemen are out there too, Kenny. Right there, on the carry off the right side for the Tigers. Tackle made, number 23, Canarius Pinnell. Pick up about two yards. That's a big hit to get a good But now, of course, you know, speed can bring a lot of heat. i tell you what, that, uh, that two yards he paid for cash. <laughs> he didn't write a check on that. <laughs> 315 in County. 
There's a head of oh, oh, look there, Kenny. Blake Benito. Benito Jones. And the ball's loose. The ball's loose. loose and Wayne Kelly. Is that? Who is Number that? 50. Who, who? 50. Jaquan White got him a touchdown. I mean, Benito Jones just demolished that running back. And he was there when the ball was, Kenny. And Jaquan White gets him a touchdown. He says, Ronald. You're not going to get up on me, big boy. I'm going to get me one, too. What is it? I tell you, I don't know where he picked it up. It must have been somewhere around the 12-yard line. I, Benito just, uh, all you could see was 95. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, well, that was a, couldn't handle it. Reggie tried his best, but couldn't get that ball. He that snap. And, so the miss, that's the first bad break Wayne County's had tonight. They missed that PAT. 37 to nothing here. We're just going to stay with the. Three minutes to go in the third, in the, in the second quarter. And I don't know what else could go wrong for Hattiesburg. I mean, I just about everything that could possibly go wrong is going wrong. But again, I'm not selling Wayne County short. Wayne County's taking advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, but you know, but Hattiesburg, I mean, that, if they could get anything to go right, you, I, I think you'd see them start to get a little life in them. But I'm going to tell you, you're down 37 and nothing and a half. It's, it's easy to get to let down, I'm going to tell you. There's a kick. It's going to be fair caught at the 25 yard line, 35 yard line, excuse me. And we've got the machine coming in. Paul, what you got for us? I saw 21 points for Wayne County in one minute, 59 seconds. Ruins your time, but looks good on the score. How long was White's touchdown run there on that fumble recovery? 23 yards. Paul, we appreciate that. 23? Thank you very much, Paul. We appreciate all you do for us. I think he said 23 yards on the ball. That's why I was. But I'll tell you, Benito, that, that was a picture. Yeah, we've well, seen him do that before. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get to see him do a lot more of that, too, in the next two years. He's just a sophomore. Okay, here we go with a handoff up the middle, and uh, Tyree Evans is going to get a hand on him. As, uh, Man, uh, this, this is like, like throwing a fresh hand bone, bone in, a, in a dog yard now. <laughs> 2.46 to go in the Hutto Furniture Company, Ace Cleaner, second quarter. Evans, 98. Pew, 45. Evans 99 up front. Hopkins 30. Bonner 44. Shelby 43. Poe 32. There's a handoff and going to try to get around the corner and they he's a he's hard to get ahead of hell on. Elusive, is he not? <laughs> yes he is. Tell you what, he's got a lot of, a lot of speed. Very quick. Number 12's out there for Wayne County too, Malik Dansby. Going to get him a first down, Kenny. Stopped the clock, 2.15 to go. In the first about ten yards. First half, yeah, picked up 10. Hey, what, I'd, I'd love to have him. I'd take him every day yeah. of the week. How much you can move. Wayne County just stacking the line of scrimmage. Yeah, good, they're good, good dashing time. that defensive line, too. Because uh, that youngster has found himself a job now. Hammond is uh, doing a good job of running the daylight. That's two, two first downs in a row. Cooley, number three, the safety senior on the stop. There's another handoff up the middle, and they're going to stop him for about a one yard, two yard gain. A little better job that time. Well, Kenny, Ollie, and Jones, and White are going back in up front for Wayne County. Evans and Poe get credit for the stop. Let's watch that. Let's watch what happens now. Watch that nose. Jones is on the nose. And that stops it all up. Eric Fairley off the right side for the Tigers. 
Tell you what, Shelby on the stop didn't pick up anything. Inside a minute, third day for the Tigers. There's pressure all up through the middle, and they're going to get through it. Kenny is going to drag him down inside the 30. Tell you what, that Fairley's a hard runner. Yes, he yeah. is. He's going to get down to the 28. Got some. Line. Got a flag on the play. 29. Looks like that's against Wayne County. Must be a face mask. You called it, Kenny. That's uh, 30, 34 seconds to go in the ace cleaners up to the first company second quarter. And the uh, Tigers are in business here. 34 seconds to go inside the 25 with the first down. Dansby checks out. Parker 27 checks in at the corner. Got a man wide open down there in the end zone. Touchdown for the Tigers with 19 seconds to go. So, I mean, they gave him a little something good to happen for him at the end of the half, but Wayne County gets the ball to start the second half. But he was wide open, wasn't he, Kenny? Hey, all he was. No, we didn't have a soul on him. I tell you what, that's a good call by Hazemar, though. You, you got Wayne County's all fogging the line of scrimmage up there and uh, slipped that tight end out down the sideline. And, boy, great job by Hazemar. I think it looks like they're going to go for two. That power set for him. Timeout on the field. Hesburg takes a timeout. We'll take a timeout to see what's going on in Warrior Football Land and we'll be back after this break. Let's go, let's go, let's get, let's get, let's go, let's go, let's get, let's get. I said it's on now. We ready to go. I said it's on now. We ready to go. Offense is lights out. Defense is lights out. Coach staff is lights out. The Okay, here we go. Hattiesburg has got on the board with 19 seconds to go in the Ace Cleaners up there Furniture Company second quarter. It's 37 to 6, and the Tigers will be going for two. And they, they got it bunched up, don't they, Kenny? Here we go. They got an unbalanced line to the right. And there goes Fairley and he got a flag and going to have a hole. The ball the Tigers. There is a flag on the play. I think that's going to be a hole. Fifty-three, I think, is going to be the culprit again. Yeah, I believe you're right. You got it again, Kenny. I think uh, Coach Mangum may make them go for it again. I think he's trying to figure out if it's uh holding is the call against the Tigers. What they're trying to figure out. I think uh Coach Mangum was trying to make sure that they're gonna move it back. They'll move it from the three out to the thirteen or be okay. a ten yard penalty. Okay, so uh, again Hattiesburg the the shoots himself in the foot again. At, at this point in the ball game they had, to replay well, I don't know. It must not have been a hold because, well, it would be from the spot of the foul. Never mind. I, it's a spot foul, so it's going to bring it out to about the 16. That negates the two point conversion. Which is of no consequence at this juncture in the mm -hmm. ball game. As Jack Crystal would have said, it is of no consequence at <laughs> this point in the contest. And, oh boy, Ronald Riley! And uh, I tell you what, Ronald is uh, having a big night tonight. He is having his—he's having a coming out party here tonight. <laughs> he's got him a sack. He got him a touchdown. Got him some pressures. Got him some knockdowns. He's having a big night. All he needs is a uh, base hit and a home run. He'll hit for the cycle. <laughs> okay. We'd like to 
We'll be coming up here shortly with the Bank Corps South Halftime Show where we'll have Paul Keen, statistically speaking, and we'll have Supervising Principal of Wayne County High School, Dr. Kathy Davis, with us during the Bank Corps South Halftime Show. And uh, milling around, uh, good again, Kenny, a good crowd here for Wayne County tonight. The second home game. Wayne County's going to be on the road two weeks in a row here coming up, but we'll talk about that later. Looks like we've uh, got our hands receiving team. Yeah, Tyler Hopkins out there, number 30, he caught a pretty good, he got the other side of the kick, recovery of road fight against us. He's a good hands guy. And let's see. And they're going to kick it and scoop it down there. And uh, Corner Sims is going to get it and just going to take a knee. <laughs> Wise move. Yeah. Because what you do now is get the ball, take a snap, and let her go. Let her go. Uh, Head for the barn. Head for the barn. It has been quite a first half for Wayne County and disastrous for the Tigers and like I said Kenny they're going to take a knee here and run this um, Ace Cleaners Hutto Furniture Company second quarter out and we'll be heading to the Bank Corps South halftime show momentarily and Hutto takes the knee Hutto nails the ball and uh, that's going to do it so with about everything that could go wrong for the Hattiesburg Tigers in the first half, Wayne County did a great job taking advantage of every opportunity that was presented to him, Kenny. And uh, we're going to take a break and come back with the Bank Corps South halftime show after our word from our friends from Bank Corps South. See you after the break. Where can you find the best food prices in Waynesboro? Here at Norman's Food Outlet, open seven days a week. If you haven't checked out our everyday low prices, you've been spending too much. Everything is cost plus 10%. Norman knows any good grocery store starts with fresh meat. Add fresh produce to grocery, to dairy, to meat, to frozen foods, to our helpful and friendly staff. Norman's Food Outlet is proud to serve all of Wayne County. Welcome to the Bank Core South Halftime Show, and we've got the supervising principal of Wayne County High School with us, Dr. Kathy Davis. It's good that you would take time out of your busy schedule on a Friday night to talk with us a little bit. Tell us, on a, does it get kind of crazy around here on Friday nights? All day on Fridays are pretty hectic, particularly with all the constructions going on and uh, some things with the grass, it's still kind of wet and it's not um, done just right yet. And so we have dirt that doesn't need to be dirt some places and we've been, we've been putting plastic over dirt and piling on rocks. I, st I was in a meeting sometime uh, probably two months ago and uh, Coach Mangum was asked, the scoreboard guy said, uh, when's the scoreboard going to get ready? And he said, what time is your kickoff? It's your first home game, so I know y'all been through the ringer. Last year was your first year at Wayne County High School in this role, and uh, we asked you about your vision. You shared that with us. What have been some of the – what's your first year been like? Was it, I guess it was quite an adventure. Can you, was, did it go like you thought or anything pop up? or uh, Tell us about your first year here. Always things pop up. It was um, it was it was good back to be back in Wayne County. There were a lot of people that we knew, but there were a lot of new people to school. We also had quite a, a good many personnel changes last year, and um, not quite as many this year, but we had several. So it was just reacclimating ourselves to the community and to the school uh, was um, was a lot of last year, and then this year uh, it's been nice already having that behind us and being able to know who the people are and know what positions to put people in. Uh, you, you talked about your vision and I know I'm putting you on the spot, I really am. I mean this is not scripted and, and you're, you're, I appreciate you doing this. So your vision for, the, for, for Wayne County High School, has it changed since last year or is it, tell us about that for, the, for this year and forward. 
No, my vision for Wayne County has not changed. I feel like that our high school can be successful in all areas. Uh, we want our we want our school to be as success uh, successful as successful in academics as we've been in um, our sports. And that's our goal is that when we talk about Wayne County, we're not talking about football or basketball or one of our other sports. We're talking about academics as well. Well, I know that we're fortunate to have you here. We appreciate you. And it's just, you know, from the outside, I'm an outsider looking in. And from where I stand, it looks mighty good. And we appreciate all that you do and all that you mean to our community. Thank you. It's good to be here. And thank you for having me. We're going to take a break to hear from our friends at Bancor South and be back after this word. Okay, here we are at the Bank Corps South Halftime Show, and from the sidelines, Paul Keene has been busy as always down there. Paul, what you got for us from a statistical standpoint? by shooting themselves in the foot over and over. But, to the credit of Wayne County, they have taken advantage of every one of those opportunities. Appreciate that. Take you a break and get ready to cover that Roy Eagle uh, Martian Pride Bear. Thank you for all you do. That's Paul Keene from the sidelines. And uh, Kenny, I guess everything is pretty much uh, laid out there statistically. I mean, we really haven't been able to run the ball on those folks at, at all. Yeah, 11 out of 11 passes is not bad, though. No, that's not bad. 115 yards is not an awful lot. Well, that's uh, appreciate that, Kenny, and as always, and uh, we're going to take a break and uh, hear from our friends at uh, Bank Corps South and thank them for making the halftime show a possibility, and uh, we'll be back with the kickoff for the uh, Extreme Sound Security more third quarter here as uh, Wayne County will be having deferred. We'll begin the second half and get the ball. So we'll take a break and be back with the third quarter after this commercial.
zero. Okay, we're down. We'd like to thank our friends uh, uh, at Bancor South for the halftime show, and we're going to begin the Extreme Sound Security More uh, third quarter in Ray Lofton and in some of his crew and the things they do there. We'll be giving you some of the many things that they do at Extreme Sound Security and More throughout the course of this quarter. To start with, they handle all types of guns, ammo, scopes, and including Class Three silencers and fully automatic weapons. They handle elite uh, archery. They sell bows, arrows, and all accessories and have a great selection of used bows. They also have truck accessories with winches, toolbox, side step bars, etc. They handle the shipping of UPS packages and accept drop-offs there. They also do car audio sales and professional installation products, and they'll do it in boats, ATVs, and UTV, UTVs. We're going to take a break and begin here with, with sharing all the stuff that they do at Extreme Sound Security and more and get to the Extreme Sound Security and more third quarter, Kenny, right now as they kick it off to Wayne County. What do you say about that? I say don't bring any message <laughs> And there's the kick, and uh, we've got the catch down there, and I can't see he's got He's running hard. He's got some room out here. Oh, here he goes. That is, uh, is that Keyshawn Cooley running that ball back? I pre and uh, he's got a nice return. Going to get that ball out there close to the 40-yard line, Kenny. Uh, looks like we got a new quarterback here in the uh, – Third quarter going to be sophomore number 18, Reggie Louisville, Stewart from Wayne County. From their own 48 line. Reggie's going to begin by having no, he's going to throw one out here to file on, makes the catch, and uh, pretty good defense. But file on is going to get four or five. Louisville, nice throw, Kenny. Yeah, Tackle made by number three, Michael Wooden, for the Tigers. Microphone's Pick up about five yards on the play. Second and five for Wayne County in the Extreme Sound Security and more third quarter here as we get playing the way, and he's going to throw another pass out here to file line, and oh, that's going to get blown up big time out there and going to probably lose a little yard or two. It's going to bring up third down for Wayne County, leading 37-6 to six after one half of play. It's going to be third down and about seven. Setting up a third down for the Warriors. Two receivers both ways for Reggie. Sims is in the background with backfield with him. Reggie's looking to throw and he's going to fire one and there's a nice throw out there and it's going to be scooped up and uh, they're going to give him the catch. That's Ramey out there. Oh, said hit the ground. Oh, oh, Colin hit, hit the ground. ground. Okay, my bad. Ramey couldn't he scoop it up, Kenny. Well, that would be a quick three and out and give the ball back to Hayesburg. Punting unit coming off to the field for the Warriors. Back to punt. 84, Terry Roney. Roney's on for his second punt of the night. Wayne County goes three and out on their first possession of the second half. Back deep for the Tigers, number 12, Bo Brown. That's a nice high punt that's going to be, Not who knows what's going to happen here. Is. It's going to go out of bounds and be caught down there at about the 36, 37-yard line. So 
no return, chance to return that one. Uh, extreme sound security and more. You can also get K2 coolers and Pelican coolers. They'll work on your computers down there. They'll sell them to you and fix them up for you. They remove virus and do hard drive replacements. And they also do laptop screen replacements and things like that. They'll fix your cracked screens on iPhones, iPads, uh, and all types of cell phones down there. And we'll be back to you a little bit more as Hattiesburg begins the, the, well, their first possession of the second half. You also get a new radiator cap for an oil plug. <laughs> Let's see what we got up front there. That's the Ollie and Jones and White to start out for them on the front. We'll try to get the rest of the rotation to you here as we go. There's a... I tell you what, that was a good, good pitch on that quarter. We get that ball out of there. They had him back there, Kenny, and he's just big and strong. He just, before he gets to the ground, he makes that pitch at the last minute. Well, tell you what, when he got the ball to Fairley, Fairley caught it on a dead run. It was a great pitch because Fairley had a good head of steam, and he, he picked up about five yards. Got a gain of about four on first down. Wayne County's playing hard to stop that run, and they're going to stop him short there for maybe a yard. I think he's going to actually lose a yard or so, isn't he? Up the bill for the I'm looking at the wrong stick. Don't pay me any attention. I'll just, pay you attention. I'm just proud to be You do a few. It's all good. Let's go bring up. Ball came loose, and the official said he was, he was down. So he picked up a yard. Third and about five. 927 to go. Here I guess in the extreme. The I guess it was well, them. So right, they're crowding that line of scrimmage, aren't they, Kenny? And they're going to get all sides and going to give them. That'll give the Tigers a first down. Dansby checks in, gives Pinnell a rest. Penalty good enough for a Tiger first down. That gives the Tigers All a first, first down at about the 48. We're lining up in the five man front. They run a trap, and boy, they run it well. Yes, they do, and he's a load to get down, as he has been all night, Kenny. So, Hattiesburg's in business down here with the first down inside the War Eagle 40. That's just power football. They're just getting more guys over there than we've got guys to, uh, to tackle and just doing a great job. That puts it to Wayne County, 20, 37, and 38. Moving the ball into the War Eagle territory. Ball being spotted at the War Eagle. First down for the Tigers of Hattiesburg High School. Hasbro's not ready to fold this tent up yet. You know, got a man out here in the flats open, and uh, Dansby's going to be on his coverage and the stop. Going to be close to the first down, but about a yard short. Tell you what, that is a hard and long throw to make when you, you throw back out that, uh, that out pattern back away from it, across your body. Ball now spotted at the Warrior goal, 49 yard line. You know, Hesburgh came out here and did what they need to do. They stopped Wayne County in that possession, and now they're driving the score. He still he is speed. a load. And <laughs> he's got to be down to the 20. It's going to be first down. That's Hammond. He gets nine yards and a first down. Moving the ball up to the Warrior goal. 21-yard line, first down, 10 yards to go for the Tigers. 8-12 to go in the extreme sound security more third quarter. Tigers threatening here on their first possession of the second half. Tell you what, somebody in the officiating crew is carrying a slide rule because there's nothing on the hash. Everything is between the hashes. <laughs> <laughs> and that drive a stack guy like me crazy. <laughs> Must be using GPS to spot it. That's a handoff right up the middle in the big yes, sir. hole and just uh, they're ripping that defensive line right now. Hesper's feeling good, Kenny. Tell you what, they are, they're just doing the, just doing the fast hitting uh, hitting plays. And uh, basically what the offensive line is doing is getting a good influence. Bottom backs finding a hole, plenty of daylight. 
Second down, three yards to go for the Tigers. Second and three inside the 15. There's a little defense right there. It's going to reel him in for a no gain or a minimal gain. Yeah, the ball carrier for the Tigers up the middle. He's going to pick up about a yard. Setting up a third down for the Tigers. Ronald Molly in on the tackle for the War Eagles. Tell you what, Hattiesburg has two of as good a running backs as we'll see this year in uh, Fairley and, and Hammond. Those, those guys can hit the hole. They've got good speed. And they run hard. Yes, they do, Kenny. Very impressive. <laughs> And uh, put the ball in the ground, and I believe they're going to, Fairley's going to get on it for them. Going to lose a couple of Recovered by number seven, Eric Fairley for the Tigers. Going to put the ball back out around the 16, I think. Ball now spotted. And bring up a fourth down. Warrior ball, 16 yard line. Just come Fourth down, five to go for the Tigers. Tigers going to take time, time out. out time out on the field. Come back and address. Uh, Hattiesburg is called their first time out of the second half. Some of the other things that we do down at uh, Extreme Sound Security and more. Uh, you can get security cameras. Uh, you can buy them down there from Ray and his crew, and they'll install them for you. They'll also sell you CB radios and accessories. They uh, do window tinting for home and car, and they do buy gold and used guns so that's extreme sound security and all the more that they do down at 7-eleven station street in waynesboro mississippi does he have a pipe stretcher i bet he does uh wayne county has had one possession here in the third quarter and was turned it over uh, had to had to was three and out now hasberg has taken the ball and has marched it down the field and they had a little uh, problem on the exchange. He's got themselves in about a fourth and uh, six. And trading 37 to six, Kenny. What else is there to do but go for it? Oh, he's looking for Got some pressure. They're going to get after him. And they're going to, he just breaks tackles. And let's see where they he's spot him. He's, he's going to get it. He's got it, I believe. He's at the 10. One so that's the first down. Keep around the right side. They had every opportunity to get him, but you're talking about a 6'5", 225-pound guy, so he's just, he's just, you're not going to get him with your arms. Tell you what, he needed six. He got six and a half. It was a great effort by the Hattiesburg Tiger quarterback. Gives him first down at the 10. First and goal. And I, I believe that's going to be just first and goal. I don't think... It is. Far enough this side of the 10 yard line to enable they've, them to earn a they've first pulled down. The, they've pulled the chains off. There's another handoff, and there's some defense right there. Going to stop him for maybe no gain or if any, a minimal gain. Barely got anything. Oh, he only got maybe half a yard. He got about a foot. Shelby and Jones will stop. Second and goal from the 10. 4.46 to go in the Extreme Sound Security and more third quarter. Ollie yeah, Jones I don't know what our time of possession has been tonight, but we haven't had the ball very much. We sure haven't. Wally gets around the sword, and they're going to, he's just going to run through folks down there, Kitty, and get about four yards. Tell you what, he's a big, tough guy. He's hard to bring down. The quarterback keeper on the right side for the Tigers. It's going to be down around, what, the six, seven-yard line? His helmet came off. Does that mean he has to sit out of play? The Warrior goal, seven-yard line, setting up a third down for the Tigers. One thing unique about the way Hattiesburg runs their offense is that they do not signal their plays in. Uh, he goes to the sideline after almost every play. Yeah, I think he's got to come out for a play. He should. 
We got inside 10 seconds on 25 second clock, and they're going to have to use their second timeout of the night, of the, of the second quarter. So, a second half. Let me restart that. I'm going to just scratch that all and start over. They're going to take their second timeout of the second half with 3.42 to go in the Extreme Sound Security and more third quarter. We're going to take a break to see what's going on in Wayne County High School World of Football Land and be back in just a minute. At Chickasaw Hay Door Company, we realize that a garage is not just a place for storage. It's the site for a big Texas Hold'em tournament, even a nursery for your baby. Nope, today the garage is another room of your home when your garage is more than a garage only. Chickasaw Door Company will do. In two years, nearly a thousand doors have been installed by Steve Locke and his crew. See Steve at Chickasaw Hay Feeds. Okay, Kenny, what we got here? Third and seven? Yeah, third and uh, third and goal from the seven. You know, at Hagesburg at this point, I mean, it's four downs. I mean, they absolutely nothing to lose. I think we'll fix to see them swing somebody in the flat. Picked it off. And he's going to bring it out, Kenny. He can go, Kenny. Is that, is that? Number That's cool. That's, that's a 100 yard touchdown return. And I'll tell you what, they're taking right back up where they left off. Hashburg shooting himself in the foot. And it's interesting to note, Kenny, that the quarterback's helmet came off and he had to, they had to, re had to push it out of the Number three, Keyshawn Cooley. Keyshawn brought that thing out, and he had visions of sugar plums dancing in his head when he stepped across that goal line. Yeah, he's seeing vapor there. <laughs> right after that 100-yard run. That a boy. And here we go. Kick us up, and it's going to be good. So, on oh, that, Keyshawn Cooley pick. Kenny, is that the is that three defensive touchdowns tonight? Three defensive touchdowns. Two formal returns and uh, a hundred yard interception return. I tell you what, old Keyshawn can run pretty fast, can't he? <laughs> when you're scared, you do outlines. <laughs> There's some big offensive linemen that have shot at him after just a minute. Well, you don't, you don't want those guys to get on you. I mean, you're a little guy like Keyshawn. You do not want a thousand pounds on your upset offensive line. Okay, I'm going to kick it off again. Ward goes up 44 to 6 with the third defensive touchdown of the night. That's going to be a kick that's going to come down here to about the 25. It's going to be fielded, and the runner's going to got a little room over there, Kenny. And I tell you what, I believe this is going to be a oh, hold. Denzel Bonner, I believe, looking at those orange feet. I, <laughs> I don't know. Was that number 44 on the stop over there? 34. 34. I tell you what, I got a little speed. Good return by Hattiesburg, though. Yes, it was. They're going to rule it. He stepped out of bounds, I think, right before he got knocked out of bounds. I guess not. We got a host of new defenders in there for Wayne County. I'm going to need some light. Let's see if we can get some of these folks in there. And there's a run up the middle, and uh, well, he's just a load to bring down. Hopkins is in there, so number thirty. Hard. We got a lot of substitution. Fifty-two is in there for Wayne County. That's Glenn Terrell. Okay, Twenty-six is in there, Kenny. That's a sophomore Nine linebacker, Gandy, two hundred forty pounder. Thirty-one, Mike Sims. Forty's in there. Tell you what, Hammond for Hattiesburg. He and Fairley both are, are two of the hardest running running backs that, that, that you'll see in high school. They really are. I mean, they have been uh, so hard for Wayne County to get a hand on and get them down. I mean, they've just run through tackle after tackle after tackle. 
I mean, you could, uh, you, you know, it could be said, well, we're not, we're not locking up. But I tell you what, they are hitting our guys hard yes. in football. Yes, they are. And uh, you're having to get a solid lick on them to be able to bring them down. Thirty-four is out there for Wayne County. That is uh, Dedrico Roberts. He's a senior defensive back. Fifty-nine for Wayne County. Larry Carter up front. So I think that's pretty much got everybody for us. Harrisburg uh, on the good return. 2.36 to go in the third quarter here. The Extreme Sound Security and more third quarter. Looking at a second and about five. And they're going to take it straight ahead and he just going to plow down there and get about running. a yard short. Yards after contact, Kenny. Hey, I'll tell you what, we're lining up in a five-man front. And, uh, and we're still not able to stop him at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that kid looks like he's probably squat about 500 pounds. <laughs> he's got some strong legs on him. He sure does. Inside two minutes of the Extreme Sound Security more third quarter. Third and one for the Tigers inside the 30 of the War Eagles. And there's going to be a... He did a yard and got two. First down for the Tigers. Terrell checks out. Number 92 is checking in. J.B. Harris, sophomore defensive lineman. And number 40, Hunter Jane. has had the ball just about the entire third quarter with exception of three offensive plays for us. And uh, we, we hadn't touched football in the second half in this third quarter. They've had the ball the entire time. There's another handoff up the middle and number running hard and going to get him about five or six on first down. Like he's going to get down to about the 22. Inside a minute. Of the extreme sound security of more third quarter. It's about the fastest quarter I believe I've ever seen. Second. It's been mostly running plays. Yeah. I mean, except for that pick six. They had two, I think, two throws in that in that prior drive. While he's moving to his left and looking downfield, there's some pressure at the last minute and some coverage. Nova throws him. That's going to stop the clock at 14 seconds in the Extreme Sound Security Moore third quarter. Third and five. Third down, five runs to go for the Tigers. Ball now started at the Warrior Bowl. Gandy, James, and your linebackers out there. 34. Roberts, Terrell, Carter, Sims up front. That's a nice little kind of misdirection there. And Wally's going to run hard down there and get him a first down inside the 15. So that's going to be the, the clock's going to stop at four Wally seconds. The around the right side. They get oh, the chain set. Gandy on the tackle for the Warrior Eagles. Sets it in play, and that's going to be the end of the Extreme Sound Security and more third quarter. So, after three, War Eagles 44, Tigers of Hattiesburg 6. We'll be back after this break and we'll be back to you for the Alpha Insurance Red Apple. Fourth quarter. Good job, buddy. Hey, Mark, what's up? The deer, you're kidding. Uh, I'll, I'll be right there. These days, it's not that often someone puts your needs above theirs. But at Alpha, with every policy, comes a promise to be right there with you when you need us most. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry to drag you through that mess. <laughs> she was due for a wash anyway. For a plan built just for you, contact Kenny Odom in Waynesboro. Three down and one to go, and we're now in the Alpha Insurance Red Apple. Fourth quarter. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Harrisburg threatening with a first and 10 at about the Warrego 13 yard line. There's a handoff and he's gonna run hard and fly his way down there close to the five. Tell you what, that youngster can total all. A couple of sophomores, Gandy and Bonner on the stop. 41 is checking in for Wayne County right now. That's uh, Jaquay Leggett, sophomore linebacker. <clears throat> Second and four to six for the Tigers. Kenny, there he goes, that's a touchdown, but there's a flag on the play, Kenny. Can you imagine that? And the ball carrier for the touchdown. There is a flag on the play. I tell you, that, that has got to be just frustrating. Oh, my goodness. What's it called? Wiggle block. block. Chop block, more likely. Once again, they shoot themselves in the foot, but maybe they can over, maybe they'll overcome come it down here, but let's see what that's gonna do to them. That's big because, that, that, you know, if you're, if you're doing a cut block inside and you get caught, that's a 15 yarder. Now that moves the ball back out to the 20. Yeah, it moves the ball back to the one goal 20 yard line. So it's a second down and. Setting up a second down be a second down about 18 for a first. 17 yards to go for the Tigers. And uh, 21 yards for a touchdown. It's gonna look through, got a man down here wide open. Touchdown. That kind of reminiscent of that first touchdown pass they threw. He was so wide open, Kenny, and uh, laid it right in there on the spot for him. Nice throw, nice catch. Most of coverage by the safety. Number 18, Willie Hartfield. It's going to make it 12, 1039 to go in the contest. I'd like to thank our friends from Alpha Insurance and the Red Apple for making this fourth quarter possible for us to be seen on the on demand on the internet uh, CMA excuse me WC dash web TV and also on CMA 10 TV on Tuesdays Thursdays and Fridays he's gonna look and throw the ball too got a man wide open in the out there kitty so he gets his two so it's now 44 to 14 that's a starting rotation of our defensive backs in there right now, too. We'll get to see Reggie uh, Stewart and company. Final, 36, PCS, 21. 10.39 to go in the contest, and uh, Hodo was 11 out of 11 in the first half, and he's not playing in the second half. Reggie Stewart started as, we've had three offensive plays in the second half, I mean, in the, in the, in the second half. Is that right? Yes. We're at 10.39 in the fourth quarter, and we've had run three offensive plays. Hainsburg, uh, in eight plays, went 38 yards. And Kenny. There they. Wayne County's taking a timeout, so we're going to take a timeout to see what's going on in War Eagle football land and also to hear from my friends at Alpha Insurance. So we'll see you after this break. Offense is lights out. Defense is lights out. Coach Steph is lights out. The whole team is lights out. The whole team. 
is lights out the whole city pride is in the building it's time to perform now the student section is rowdy the band section is rowdy the fan section is rowdy and it's starting to get cloudy the energy is thriving on the cloud Okay, 10.39 to go in the contest in this final quarter of this contest. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance and the Red Apple Chevron. Looks like they're expecting uh, some tomfoolery here in the form of maybe an onside or a squib kick down here. So Wayne County's got everybody up. Got DJ back standing at about the 16, 17-yard line. Harrisburg's loading up over there on the left side. And that's what they're going to do in. Sims is going to make the catch. He's good-handed. Uh, receiver down there makes the catch, and Wayne County's got the ball. Around the 46-yard line. First down, War Eagles! Second offensive possession of War Eagles of the second half, and uh, Reggie Stewart. West Point, 14. Reggie Stewart and company. Got DJ in the backfield with him. Cortland Sims in there and tight end. Got two left, one right. Stewart's going to hand the ball off to DJ, and he's going to try to get on the corner, and he's going to string him out, and he's just making folks miss. And uh, Boy, he did a good job uh, just to get anything. He, he really did. Of That's a lot of work for a yard. Like he might have picked up two yards. Rise of few checks in. Yard. Don't let uh, Reggie fool you now. He can spin that thing, so they better not go to sleep on him. Elijah Pugh making a little folks miss and running real hard. Going to get a first down for Wayne County, Kenny. I tell you what, that's something we needed to keep the ball moving and the clock running. Not give this football back to Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg's starting to find a little rhythm. They're pounding the football, and uh, that, that's how they're able to move on Wayne County. And there goes uh, Elijah running hard again, Kenny, for about another eight or nine. And like I said, that's just what the doctor ordered right there. Yes, sir. Absolutely. When it's time to do it is when you're nursing a lead, a huge lead, trying to get this thing, get it over and get it out of there. He gets down to the 36. Kenny, you made an observation last year. You said being a balance on offense is doing what you need to do when you, when you, when you want to do it. And right now, that's what we're seeing. Nice step and cut back, Kenny. And yeah, another one. He had to cut back. There wasn't anything but a <laughs> yellow wall over there where he was. Boy, they finally bring him down. Good job by Sims. Keep his feet. Keep turning downfield. So Wayne County's beginning to assert themselves out physically on the ground. Moving the ball up to the Tigers. Sims out, Pew in. 37 yard line. Goes Elijah Pugh's going to get him at the line of scrimmage. They stuffed that one pretty good. Inside eight minutes in the contest in the Alpha Insurance Red Apple fourth quarter. Stewart's looking at a second ten. And they're going to get the uh, Tigers offside and make it second and five. Offside is the ball against the Tigers. Five-yard penalty will replay. Reggie down. seems to have a knack for that. We've seen him do that a couple of times already this year. Tim, when Haysburg has, has blitzed their guys tonight, their linebackers, and we hadn't seen, didn't see that in the first two ball games. And uh, that has really jammed things up on the inside for Wayne County. They've got the they again walked up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, I'm not sure what that was. I don't think they snapped the ball on the count. I think uh, I think it had a delayed snap. Everybody was going. So from second. So we go back to a second. <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. That's what I was trying to say, and you made it happen. You know, the thing is, though, you can't go unless the center snaps the ball. That is true. I mean, he's, he's in control. If there's a guy out there in control, that's going to be the center. 
He's got his hand on the joystick, and if he don't push it, it don't. <laughs> it go. ain't happening. Five lines in motion. Stewart gets the snap and gonna leaves it with uh, Pew, and he gets around that right side and just keeps leaning and pushing, and it's gonna be a nice game there, Kenny, on first down, it. second down. Get around the 20, 22 yard line, so 23. Should be about a third and five. Six fifty one to go in the Alpha Insurance Red right Apple fourth quarter. Two left, one right for Reggie. Reggie gets them again. And we should get that first down. He must have a pretty good uh, boss inflation down there. Five yard penalty. County's got their first down inside the uh, inside the 20. Reggie's gonna hand the ball to Elijah, and he's gonna work hard for a yard, maybe. Tell you what, those linebackers at Hattiesburg have had a huge night against us on the inside tonight. Second nine for the War Eagles. Ball on the 16. That's a long nine. Long way. nine, says Kenny. Look at that. Old Reggie's going to keep it and turn it and get inside the 15. Going to bring up a third down and about seven or eight. Five and a half to go. Third down and about eight. Stewart's going to look to throw. You got a 5 1 down there, and they're going to sack him, and the ball's on the ground, and uh, they're going to separate him from the ball, and Wayne County's going to get it back. And I guess you could call that dodging the bullet. Uh, it's more like getting caught up in the shrapnel. <laughs> more around. That's a big loss, and uh, put it back out to the 27. That's a loss of 10 yards. 11 yards. Fourth and a long, long way to go. Inside five minutes. Should be something like fourth and 18. Not sure exactly. Time what we got out here? Wayne County. Oh, we're shorter guy. Got to delay a game, I guess. Well, we sent one in, one comes out. All sides. Xavier well, left with number nine checks in tonight for his first action of the night inside five minutes Fourth in the game. Down. Fourth and 24 or so. Reggie's going to look third, going to lost one down here. Got to Jarvis Chambers. Makes the catch the 10. And he's down there close, Kenny. That's a nice throw. That ball's out of bounds at the one. First and goal from the one. Sweet well, throw. Fourth and 24. You get what you can. Oh. He laid that thing in there, and the Jarvis just caught it right in stride. That's good for 31 yards in the first down. Tiger, one yard line. goal. We've got a timeout on the field, so we're going to take a timeout and be back after this break. The Scoreboard is the only sports and entertainment restaurant in Waynesboro and surrounding towns. Our arcade has over 20 gaming machines, pool tables, and so much more. Our menu has appetizers, burgers, salads, po' boys, steaks, the best in town. Book your child's birthday party or event in our large, spacious upstairs hall. It's football season. Come watch your favorite college or NFL team on one of our large screen TVs. Fun for the entire family. The scoreboard on Azalea in Waynesboro. Kenny, I hear you got some bee traps down there. We do. Carpenter bee traps. Carpenter bee traps. Locally made. Oh. 
They're about fifteen dollars made, and they'll trap the bees. I've got two at home. They work great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see if we can uh, put these They're tigers in the trap. Al Gore and Peter approved. <laughs> Well, let's see what happens here. Stewart and Raja are in the backfield with him. And let's see. That's going to be the handoff for you. There he goes. Touchdown, Wayne County. So it's 4-11 to go. Wayne County goes up 50-14. to 14 And we're on to try the PAT. A carry on for the PAT out of the steward of uh, the whole steward of Staff of Palmer. Good snap. Now down, kick is up, and it's going to be good. No, no good. good. I'm sorry. I missed call that one. 50 to 14, 411 to go in the contest. A lot of the Wayne County fans are making their way out now. They feel uh, like this one's pretty much over with. You know, Wayne County came out and did what they had to do, Kenny. They uh, 12, 12 plays and 54 yards. Not much at a time, but uh, we had that one big chunk of the fourth and 24 play. We picked up 31 yards and got the first down to one. But 12 plays, it took, took a lot of time off the clock. We're down to four minutes. Yes, it did. This is starting to look like another Wayne County High School Warrior football victory. Wayne County will improve to two and one. Home's been good to them, Kenny. Yeah, I believe you can uh, let the fat lady get up and start stretching her lungs. <laughs> As Barney Fife would warm up, me they, me they, me they. And here we go. That's going to be the kick. He'll put it on the ground. and uh, I don't think that's exactly what he intended to do. <laughs> I don't think it was either. Good hands there. Because that gives Hainsburg the football at, uh, at 47. In fact, I think the up guy probably just cut it off. Pugh, Gandy, Bivens, James. Evans. Hogan, Roberts, number 20 is out there, Arrington. What we got going on, Kenny? The official timeout must be heat. Well, we'll take another break in our Alpha Insurance Red Apple fourth quarter. See what's going on out there in football land, and we'll be back in just a minute. I'm in my own zone, it's beast mode time, so go hard or go home. I'm a beast. Yeah, I got it on my mind, see I came here to shine, so let's get it on the grind. I'm a beast. Yeah, I'm in my own zone, it's beast mode time, so go hard or go home. I'm a beast. Yeah, I got it on my mind, see I came here to shine, so let's First and ten at the 46. For the Tigers, all the Tigers. We've got a new quarterback, Kenny, for the Tigers. He's going to move out there to his left. Got a little room and uh, work his way around. And there we go. And they're going to get him out of bounds down there close to the 40-yard line. Well, they got a good block on the corner on us that time and uh, gave him some gave him some daylight. He, he makes good use of it. Gets the ball down inside our 45. Number 30, Tom Hopkins on the tackle for the Warriors. Not before a Tiger first down. First down for the Tigers, 324 to go in the Alpha Insurance Red Up a fourth quarter here. There's some uh, pretty good defense there on that play. And what you're seeing now is, well, there's number two, but Hammond's still in. Okay, I'm going to say some, some JV guys, but. Uh, and 26, DeAndre Gaffney. Essentially no game. I'm surprised to see Hammond and uh, uh, Haysbrook still got their first team guys in there, just a different quarterback. They've still got, uh, they're running fairly in and out, and uh, Hammond as well. 
That's some pretty good pressure on him. They got him on his horse. They're going to hit him as he throws it away. And a nice whip over his head. Oh, uh, fair to hurt him. Some footstep. No, that's to Hammond. Bring up third. You can see Hammond as he stretched his hands up. He turned his head looking to get hit. <laughs> Well, I'd say there's a pretty good chance that he would have gotten hit. Well, I'll tell you what, he's taking some licks tonight. That young man, he's as tough as no time X watch. He <laughs> took a lick and he kept on ticking now. I've been impressed with those guys with Fairley Hammond. I, I really have. They are outstanding football players. 91 checks in for Wayne County. Jamarius Hundley, a sophomore. Defensive lineman. Got some more guys checking in. We'll try to get them called out for you. Inside three minutes. There's a handoff, and uh, here he goes, Kenny. Man, running behind it, big offensive line. They're going to get him down there at about the 20. Bivin checks back in. Yancey, the ball for the Tigers. 91 oh, checks Cowboys. out. That's uh, only checking out. Tackle by 34, Roberts. Roberts, 34 on the stop. Everton's in there, number 20. Dansby, 12. Hogan, 11. First down and 10 for the Tigers. and That's a nice little nifty move. He's running around trying to get on that corner, and he's going to break a tackle and gain a couple of three yards. Inside two minutes to go in the contest. I'm going to tell you, that was a mistake by a linebacker out there. When you get to chase the guy toward the sideline, you can't turn. You cannot face the sideline if you're trying to stretch him out. You've got to keep that shoulder turned back to the inside, or else what you get is that. You get the quarterback planting the foot, turning back upfield on him. And uh, that's something that you learn as a, as, a, as a linebacker. You've got to stay squared up with a running back. Well, Wayne County's getting to play a lot of folks in these last two games, and they're learning, Kenny. And like you said, that's a good thing in the long run for Wayne County. Second and six, 112 to go in the contest. He's back to throw. Got some pressure got on him. Wide open got a man there. wide open. They're going to strike him down out there for a uh, couple of yards. Inside a minute now in the football contest and in the Alpha Insurance Red Apple fourth quarter here at Wayne County High School. Dansby on the stop. Or James number 40 out there helping him out. Third down and about three. And he's going to get him some oh, space out there, and they're going to play some there. defense, and they're going to do defense. just that. Oh, that wow, is that Harrington, number 20? Man, what that a, is. Is. What a what defensive play. Harrington's quite an athlete. He plays both ways. He plays running back and defensive back. I tell you what, he, he turned something that looked like he was going to go for big yards. He's, he's going to be a special in the one yard game. Got a he's timeout by Hattiesburg. Timeout for Hattiesburg. We're going to take a break here to in, the, in our uh, closing moments of our Alpha Insurance Red Apple fourth quarter and be back after this break. Now look me in the eyes and put your hand in mine. Whatever's about to happen right here in this moment of time. So let's draw a line right here in the sand. And let me say that on this very day is the day that we took the stand. Because not just the game, it's more than the game. It's more than the hurt, it's more than the pain, it's more than the glory, it's more than the fame. This right here is about legacy, man, so it's bigger than me, it's bigger than us. We can lose sight in the midst of the fuss. Let's slow it down and take it in. Enjoy this moment, what's the rush? Thank you, back, but we wanted more. This is what we've been waiting for. With tears in our eyes, we let our hearts roar. Unleash war, we walk out this door. We won't be delayed, we won't be denied. In the end, we won't be refused. To clean. All right, Kitty, 16-4 to go here. And, uh... I believe you pointed out something of interest there. <laughs> I said it's first, what, fourth time out of the second half? Huh? I think Coach Mangum was just down there telling the, the, uh, the point of the side judge. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm the, uh, we're going to help them a little bit. We're going to give them four time out. Hasbro's going to look to run that thing around the corner, and here we go. Oh, oh we're going to strike him down there, and that's going to get us inside 10 seconds. And, and it stops the clock at eight. Ball on the six yard line. Clock is stopped with a, I guess that was a first down, so that'll give them a, clock is running again, and that's gonna do it, Kenny. Wayne County's gonna get out of here for their second win of the season. They go to two and one, having won two of their home games. 
beating Quillman last week, and now they've defeated the Tigers of Hattiesburg High School by a score of 50 to 14. We're going to take a break and go down to the field and talk to Paul Keene and get Kenny's analysis and see what Coach Mangum has to say about tonight in the McDonald's postgame show. We'll see you after the break. Welcome to the McDonald's post-game show, and here we are, a lot of milling around and excitement down here. Coach, big win tonight against, uh, I'm telling you, that was a pretty a pretty good bunch of football players on that Hattiesburg team. Yeah, really, really athletic. Uh, I tell you what, once they, if they ever find their identity on offense, they can be a really good football team. They're physical and, and, and everything, and, you know, they, they bloodied their nose a few times. Uh, and, uh, you know, not taking anything away from them. They got a good football team and, uh, you know, Coach Vance to get that thing going. You know, one thing we noticed, and we talked about it up here in, in the booth, and that was, you know, they shot themselves in the foot over and over yeah. and over again. But what Wayne County did, what your squad did, was took advantage of every opportunity that Hattiesburg presented them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, three defensive scores, <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> Uh, and that was great for those guys because, you know, we go out there and make stops and everything, and people talk about the defense, but when they can go out there and score points like that and, and to see those guys that never touch the ball being able to touch the ball and, 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 and score points, it was really good. And our, and our offense had, I think uh, Paul said, 41 snaps uh, tonight. So, you know, 50 points and 41 snaps, I, hey, we'll take that any time. You know, Paul reported to us that Hodo was 11 out of 11 in the first half. And, you know, we talked about balance. And Kenny made an analogy last year, and I shared it with you, and it was that. And I'm probably going to mess it up. But being balanced is not running and throwing at the same, at the same amount. It's being able to do what you want to do when you need to do it. And we didn't really run the ball that well. But when it came crunch time here to run this clock down and nurse that lead, we were able to run that ball like I'm sure you wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah, we did. And we did it with some young guys up front. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, we've had to, we've had some injuries and things, and we've had to move some people around, and felt like those offensive linemen. You know, we're we're not where we 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 need to be, where we want to be right now. But you know, those guys, it takes some time for them to gel, and you know, we we go into next week with our, you know in the last game of our first phase of the season, which is our nine division. And, you know, we want to, you know, just keep getting better right there to keep to start for that, you know, division run. Coach, we go on the road next week and we finish up at nine division down in Gulfport, you know, and our folks are going to be watching our broadcast this coming week. What do you want to tell our folks about going down there to Gulfport? It's important to have that following, isn't it? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, we're going down there and and if I know our people like, like I think I do, we'll have as many fans in the stands as Gulfport. It might as well be a home game for Wayne County because we'll have as much orange as Gulfport does. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what we want to do. We want to have all of our people there, uh, you know, go down and, and, and support this this team right here because you know what 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 these what these coaches and what these players have done, uh, you know, since that first game, we've come a long way. We've come a long way since since game one, and and you know, our fans need to get out and and, and really come come down to Gulfport and, and, and support us uh, support us on that uh, on that big road game down there. Well, we're going to look forward to it. We're going to cut you loose and let you take care of your charges here to wrap this thing up tonight. We're going to take a break and hear from our friends at McDonald's and be back with Paul Keene and Kenny Odom to wrap up the McDonald's postgame show after this word. Welcome back to the McDonald's post-game show, and as promised, Kenny Odom and 
the dream. Paul, let's hear about it statistically speaking. Well, for Wayne County, the offensive number's not overly impressive, actually. 14 first downs, 70 yards rushing, 149 passing on 14 of 15. So they only had one incompletion, and that was Reggie Stewart. And really, it, I don't know, the receiver tried to sell it. All right. I mean, what can you say? And he almost got it. It only, it only hopped twice. Yeah, it only hopped twice, but the, the, they sold it pretty good. The Sun sold it real well. One fumble that they didn't lose, seven penalties, two punts, 194 return yards. Of course, 100 of that was that one interception return. Two of eight on third down, one of three on fourth down. Time of possession, 16 minutes and 50 seconds until that drive in the fourth quarter for Wayne County the, where they scored the last touchdown. They had only had three offensive snaps and had only had the ball for one minute, 28 seconds of the second half. Uh, individually, DJ Sims, 39 yards rushing, Elijah Pugh, uh, 38, David Hodo, 11 of 11 passing for 115, Reggie Stewart, 3 of 4 for 34, receiving to Jarvis Chambers, 4 for 43, Devontae Ramey, 3 for 42, Deshaun Fahalan, 4 for 33, so they're really spreading it around well. Hattiesburg, 16 first downs, 192 yards rushing, 75 passing, Four fumbles, they lost three of them. Two of them went all the way the other way. Ten penalties, three punts, 29 return yards, seven of 15 on third down. Defensively, Hayden Shelby, uh, I think he recovered from that concussion <laughs> against Oak Grove really well. Ten tackles, Jamal Poe, eight. Keyshawn Cooley, Ronald, Ronald Ollie, Benito Jones, Tyree Evans, all six each. Uh, Ronald Ollie, two pressures. Uh, Tyree Evans caused a fumble, Jamal Poe, Jaquan White, and Ronald Ollie recovered fumbles. Of course, Jaquan and Ronald took them both to the end zone. Interceptions, Traymon Lofton and Keyshawn Cooley, who just took his all the way the length of the field for another score. Yeah. So not a bad night for the War Eagles. It was a, it was somewhat crazy. Ken, we talked about this, and I mentioned it to Coach. They presented us with many opportunities in Wayne County, even though they didn't have the big offense, like you said. And, and I talked to Coach Mangum about this, what you said about being and balanced, doing what you doing what you want to do when you need to do it, and that's what Wayne County did all night long. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and looking at 41 offensive snaps, that's not enough to do a whole lot of anything in most ball games. But you had a lot of help from your defense. I mean, you had 21 defensive points. Uh, you know, the two fumble returns and then the uh, interception return for 100 yards. That's 21 points, and that does a lot. To, to, for your offense. I mean, that takes a lot of pressure off of them. Now, as Paul said, you know, third quarter, we had three snaps. You get four if you count the snap for the punt. So, uh, you, you know, and going into the fourth, I mean, the game was not close. It was not out of hand. But Hasburg, you could see them start to gain some traction and, and gain some ground. They started controlling the football. Had they been able to do that in the first half, this had been a lot closer football game. But their mistakes killed them. And one of the things that's so encouraging about this is that our guys took advantage of those things. And uh, when, when you're able to get somebody backed up in a corner, it's like watching Muhammad Ali fight. I mean, you know, he danced around the ring, but if he ever got you hemmed up in the corner, the lights were fixing to go out. <laughs> and and so, you know, in looking at that, that, that is great preparation because this Gulfport bunch is going to be tough. And, uh, and, and we needed last week, for this week and we needed this week for next week because we're going to see the same bunch of big physical guys that are going to be uh, probably a lot better football team at this point. Paul, any closing thoughts you'd like to share? I hate this sports cliche, but it applies. Wayne County imposed their will on Hattiesburg tonight. And, I mean, that was it in a nutshell. Now they just, as Coach Mangum tells them after every game, Monday morning or Monday we're going to get back to the grind and do what we do. And they're going to need to do that against Gulfport. Kenny, closing remarks? Well, I mean, it, one thing that really looks good is we put 112 points on the board in two weeks, and we've allowed 14. And that's huge. That's a huge confidence builder. And, again, going to Gulfport, we're going to need every bit of that confidence because Gulfport's a good football team. And, and we're coming off, I, I think, as good a, a two ball games as you could a, as a football team. And, and I think if these guys continue to build their momentum, then, uh, then, then we've got some real good days ahead of us. Wayne County seems to be getting that swagger back, and that's a good thing here. And uh, we want to thank all of our sponsors for tonight and, and closing us out to uh, McDonald's for making our postgame show uh, possible. And remember, you know, we're going to be watching this this week, and, and Friday night we got to get ready. And so come on down to Guffport to watch your Wayne County High School Warriors take on the Admirals of Guffport High School next Friday night. See you there. <laughs>